Hello, hello, hello. What's up today, everyone? This afternoon, it's been so long since I've streamed. I forgot the intro. <laughs> What's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday to you. I blame, I blame the brain fog. I blame the brain fog. It's the brain fog. It's not me. Fine Tuesday to you all. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. What is up? I'm handsome and swing for zero and helichrome and spike dev and crowd pleaser. Thanks for all the gift subs to Rabble Master and a Johnny the Cat and Gutter and Necrotide in the uh, Ben in Ben Ben Donner. How's everyone doing today? Oh, I'm happy to be back it has been way too long since we've streamed uh i got the i got the janky the janky backup cam uh, if you're wondering why the cam looks different so my good camera uh bear bear chewed through the power cord yesterday so i got another one ordered but it's not going to be here until tomorrow or thursday so <laughs> So I got the old camera, the janky old camera, but uh, I'm excited to be back. It's been too long since we've streamed, and we're going to have some fun today. I, I know, I know, I know. We have a no alchemy rule, but this deck is just like so absurd that I want to at least show, like, show that it exists because this deck is just ridiculous. I don't know if it actually makes me like alchemy more or less because it's just so ridiculous uh but i want to at least show off this storm deck because it's just absolutely absurd and then we'll do some uh, we'll do some exploring got a few different explorer decks adventures we haven't tried a uh, null hide ferox fight rigging some luca action kind of trying to cheat titan of industry into play so we're gonna have some fun today we're gonna talk about oh my goodness so much stuff first stream after a command fest uh command fest richmond which was super fun um this is naya storm actually Actually. I mean, I guess, I guess it's technically Golgari. It's not Naya, is it? I think of Naya because of Cabretti being Naya, but technically there's no, there's no actual white cards in it. There's a little bit of black mana, but not a ton of black mana. Gaga Myth in Silverpool. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big scoop cheer for you. Hey, what's up, Naivon? How are you? So that's the plan for today. Having some fun, hanging out, catching up. Uh, they just announced a big magic event. I don't know if any of you saw this or are going to it, but they're doing a magic 30th anniversary event in Vegas in October that I might go to. I don't know. I just went to a magic event. I, I don't go to events very often. I broke my rules. I go to an event and I immediately get COVID. So <laughs> that makes me a little nervous to go to another one, but I do always have fun when I go to GP Vegas's and this isn't technically GP, but it looks like it's going to be super big and super fun. So I don't know. It, it looks like it could be worth going to. I might try to make it out to Vegas to uh, magic 30 this fall. Uh, I've been having fun helping Brad with commander questions. <laughs> Brad, I, yeah, I got to, uh, I got to hang out with, I got to hang, it was probably my beard's fault, although I will say, I, and I, uh, I'm so bad with names, when I go to, uh, magic events, I meet so many people, that by the end of the weekend, I don't remember anyone's names, which is embarrassing, lose it, welcome to the fishbowl, thank you so much for your subscription, big super for you, thank you, thank you, thank you, so I started off Command Fest Richmond with, like, a, a medical blue mask, but they're so bad with beards, like, really, the beards get, like, up in your mouth, and it's just, it's miserable, but someone gave me a beard mask, which is kind of a cloth mask, so it's probably not the safest mask, but it's so so much better with a beard it actually is long and it goes down and covers the beard and it was so much better than the medical one so shout out to the person whose name i don't remember unfortunately they gave me the awesome beard mask i am glad to be back yeah i'm feeling much better i'm not a hundred percent covid kind of lingers i guess a little bit but i'm so much better than last week last week i was so tired good lord also very congested anyway let's let's uh let's uh, do our reminders get into some storm action then we can talk about vegas about richmond about endless spoiler season double masters coming up what y'all have been doing for the last couple of weeks so anyway replay youtube that's where you can find all the old streams including this one in the future i'm from fast uh fring and seriously considering making a trip to vegas for the 30th anniversary have you ever been to vegas before i will say if you've never been to vegas i always have fun in vegas uh i, I just i don't know vegas is a, it's it is so unique there is not another place probably in the world that's like vegas i always have uh, ooh, the hype train is running. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Nia Jack, welcome to the fishbowl. And also, birds, 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 welcome you as well. And lose it. Big scoop cheer for all of you. If you've never been to Vegas, it's probably worth the trip once just because it's just because it's wild, like, Vegas is, it's, it's a very interesting town, I always have fun when I go to Vegas, every time I go, uh, if you've never been before, the first time, it's, it's definitely an experience, just because it's, it's different than any place else, 
have a good uh good news my bant blink deck has three shocks two tosses four titan Ooh, that's a big upgrade the the titan of industries is a huge deal what's up magic carp how are you congrats on uh, on the place that is super exciting uh so replay youtube that's when find all the old streams normal youtube Tons of stuff coming up on there. Tomorrow, we're modernizing for Against the Odds. Special episode, because there wasn't a poll next week. We're going to have Double Master spoilers. I talked about this on Twitter, but I should mention it here as well. So, I have come to the conclusion that there's too many spoilers these days. There's too many spoilers for me to do spoiler content on every single set, and still do gameplay, and still do streams. So, I think the plan is... That, uh, that Tomer is going to take over some of the commander stuff as far as spoiler content, starting with the Warhammer decks. So if it's like a commander precon or something, uh, Tomer might do spoiler videos for those. I'm going to focus more on the, the main sets, the modern legal sets, uh, and so forth. So spoilers are going to be a little different. For Double Masters, I don't think there's any point in doing full spoiler videos. So I am going to do like a little kind of a, a tier list financey thing, just about like what expensive cards were reprinted each day. So I'm going to change that up a little bit. So hopefully that means more streams and uh or yeah more streams and more gameplay content even though it means a little bit less spoiler content so uh they do need to come down a bit with Sarah. yeah it's who cool. it's uh, i like having a lot of sets and i like having it stay busy i think that's awesome but this trend of like having a set release and starting spoilers for the next set the week after that is just I don't think that's sustainable. That's just too fast. And if you saw Wizards announced on Twitter the start of Double Master spoilers uh, with their stream on Thursday, and pretty much every comment was people just like, slow down a bit, Watsy, slow down. Like, this is just too much. We just got Commander Legends. Last Friday was its release day, and now we're into the next spoiler season. And that happened with Streets of New Capenna. That happened with, I think, Kamigawa. Well, it's just set into set into set into set. I don't know how people keep up with it. Like, I don't know. Like, how do you keep up with it if you're playing the game? That's that's the real question. I'm just trying to make videos about it. Like, whatever. Like, if I don't do a spoiler video about some commander precon, nothing horrible is going to happen. But how do you keep up on it if you're trying to play? Like, how do you buy the cards? How do you build the decks? There are so many. Ugh, I build a different deck each week for Commander Clash. Literally every week, we have a new deck. That's 50-ish decks a year. And I don't get to play all the decks I want to. And I know there's no way you can do that in paper. There's no way that no one's going to have the money, the time. Even if you could build all those decks decks there's no way you're going to be able to play all those decks so ah, yeah it's it's wild i mean i like that we always have something to talk about that part's exciting but maybe give it a couple weeks between sets or something like a couple weeks after the release until the next spoiler season starts a, a little bit longer could be good anyway a reminder hey what's up sir roberts i'm glad to be back a reminder that our sponsor today is card kingdom yeah. can i not type sponsor apparently not our sponsor today is Card Kingdom, and if you need some magical cards, maybe from Commander Legends, maybe soon from Double Masters, you can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish, and even get a free goldfish shaker. Just let them know you want one in your order notes, and they'll hook you up. Otherwise, hey, Sea Dog, thanks for hanging out. Uh, merch page, and thanks for the Yarok tech. That deck was so sweet. Uh, merch page, tokens, t-shirts, playmats, can always support the stream of the channel, the site, donations, always appreciated, never required. $2 or more gets your message read on stream. Uh, so, anyway... Those are reminders. Let's talk about this deck really quick. Amazy Aura Fun. What? I'm actually curious. This is the first Mazzy deck I've seen. I'm curious what commanders from Commander Legends people are building around. What is your most hype? Like, are you building any new legends from this at? What do you What do you hype for? What are you actually building? Mazzy is a card that I haven't even. <laughs> there's so many new legends. I haven't even really considered what might go into a Mazzy deck. But uh, the list looks sweet. Kind of like a cool aura e enchantment-y kind of commander. I like it. Uh, Abingo, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tube cheer for you. Uh, Shivan was having a ton of fun with Mazzy. Uh, in draft or in... Ooh, Jan Jansen Aristocrat sounds sweet. Jan Jansen is also one of the one of the commanders that actually made it on Moto. All right, so this deck... <laughs> I know we don't really play we don't really play alchemy, but I had to show off this deck because I think Wizards just accidentally broke alchemy. This deck came across my Twitter and I saw it and I was like, all right, I don't really play alchemy, but this deck is just so wild we gotta try it. So the idea of this deck, this is Grinning Ingus Storm, but it is ridiculously powered up thanks to some of the, the, the fake alchemy cards. So the main goal of the deck, Grinning Ingus, essentially uh you can cast it repeatedly by bouncing it back to your hand. So what we need 
to do to go infinite with this deck is have a way to uh, make back the mana it costs to bounce Ingus. Basically, it's three to cast. It makes three when you bounce it, but you got to pay one to bounce it. So that means if we have a Burgie out, we can cast into infinite number of times. So if we have Burgie and like Prosperous Innkeeper, we gain infinite life. If we have Burgie, Prosperous Innkeeper, and Dina, we also were able to not only gain infinite life, but drain our opponent out of the game and win the game on the spot. What makes this deck so absurd though? is two of the fake alchemy cards. Dylan Hunter, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Then those cards are Racketeer Boss, which this card, I don't know what Wizard is doing with alchemy. These cards are just so ridiculous. When Racketeer Boss comes into play, you get to choose two creatures or planeswalkers in your hand and they perpetually gain when you cast it, make a treasure token. So this does two different things. One is it can replace Burgi in our combo. We play this, we target our Grinning Ingus, now when we cast Ingus, it makes the mana it needs to recast itself and bounce itself. So this also just goes infinite, the same way we were just talking about. The other thing about this card is, is it stacks. Ooh, the audio's out of sync? Oh, you're right, with my, it's out of sync with the face, isn't it? Huh. Oh no, that's, ugh. I think it might be because I got the backup webcam. Ugh. Let me look at my OBS. Is it delayed? It is kind of delayed, isn't it? Oh, I don't know what to do about that. How do I, how do I fix that? Maybe we got to go old school, no, no webcam stream. <laughs> it looks all right to you. All right, hopefully, hopefully it's good. Uh, so, so that is, uh, that's one thing it does. The other thing that Racketeer Boss does that is super essential is it stacks? So if we get two Racketeer bosses, we can put both of them on the same Grinning Ingus, and now we make infinite mana with the deck. The other huge piece of the puzzle is Cabretti Revels. When you cast a creature, you seek a creature of lesser mana value on the battlefield. So this allows us to essentially put most of our deck into play as we Grinning Ingus. We play it, we get a free two drop, like a Prosperous Innkeeper or a Dina, or we get the Racketeer boss, and then we bounce Ingus, and we do it again, and then we get another two drop until we get all our two drops on the battlefield, and then we win with the Dragon combos we were talking about with the witty roast master etb drain or by just hasting up our entire team after we put everything on the battlefield with goro goro so that is the absurdity of alchemy storm we need we need a vtube yes i that's not really a thing in magic is there any is there anyone who is vtubing in in magic now i'm surprised that hasn't happened yet that happens in other games right Having trouble figuring out how to finance my new place. It sucks because I wanted to get a couple boxes of Double Masters too. And it's just brutal because I'm super close to being broke after rent and deposit. And my birthday is going to be spent eating ramen dinners apparently. Oh, when's your, when's your birthday, Magic Arp? Well, skipping, skipping Double Masters I think is fine. Um, I think honestly for like 90% of players, maybe even higher... I think that uh, I think that you're better off just getting singles. I know it's fun to open the boxes, but uh, I think the wisest plan financially is just to get the singles you need once they get cheaper. I managed to eat at the Lily Pearl Two in Richmond. It was really good. Had fried chicken. It was hella delicious. That's actually what I had. That was the best meal I had in Rich. I gotta say, <laughs> speaking of Richmond, <laughs> oh, all right, that's a. It's a milk on cereal kind of town, I think. Uh, we don't have the lands. We're gonna. Have to... Ooh, all right. This is this is fine. Uh, we will put a forceful cultivator to the bottom, I think. Uh, yeah, this this will work. We got the racketeer boss. We need to find the ingas, but so so. <laughs> I'm feeling much better. What's up, Gordius? How are you? I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent better. But I'm like ninety percent. I'm good enough. I'm good enough. How can I feed my gambling addiction without cardboard? I know. I'm in the same place. I love, I just love cracking packs. So I know it's wrong and I shouldn't, but I still always do it. I'm from Richmond. When everyone asked what it was uh, like growing up there, I would say fine. So, so speaking of, oh, we drew the, the Ingas. Okay, this is going to be absurd now. So Racketeer Boss. Target Ingas. Target Racketeer Boss. Yeah, we're gonna go off pretty quickly here. So, <laughs> I want to know, Dragon Bones, if you're from Richmond, if you're from, I, I'm gonna talk about the the milk on cereal kind of down in a minute, the the food. So, <laughs> if you're from Richmond, though, ooh, um, oh, uh, now what? Racketeer boss. 
Mega Treasure. This Grinning Ingus is going to be pretty good here in a minute. Uh, target Ingus. And see, so now the trick is, so now we have multiple, multiple instances of this persistent ability. So right now we're already infinite on mana. We just need something to do with the infinite mana, but we're already infinite on mana. We can make infinite treasures whenever we want to. Hopefully what this means is we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to uh, draw a way to, you know, let's hit him with a racketeer. This card's busted. Why did they make this? It's a two minute three, two, two, and it's a busted combo piece. I, I don't understand what's going on in Elgavi. So I'm in, so we're in, we're in, uh, we're in Richmond. The first night, uh, Krim and I go to uh, Secret Sandwich Shop, it's called. And we had a very nice, uh, very nice waiter that was waiting on us. And we asked her, so what is there to do in Richmond? We're not from here. And the answer was, uh, we have a river that's nice to look at. We we're like, what do, what do locals do? What do locals do? What do you do for fun in Richmond? We have a river. <laughs> we, we have a very nice river. Sometimes people go look at the river. And that's going to be my my everlasting memory of of Richmond is is apparently they got a river that's really nice to look at. And that's, that's like what the locals do. <laughs> And not even a new river, it's an old river. I mean, rivers are cool, but if, if that's the first thing you go to when someone asks what to do in your town, it just reminds me so much of, like, small-town New York growing up. Like, I, I don't know, yeah, we got we got some nice potato fields. Like, if you ever if you ever enjoyed looking at a potato field, we got you, we got you covered. <laughs> you were all set. Um, the food! I just have such... <laughs> I just have such uh, such boring taste in food that we would go to these like everyone liked to go to these nice restaurants. But where do we go? We went to uh, oh, um this like Korean ah oh, I'm trying to think of what it was Korean fusion place or something one night and the they made I got chicken the chicken was really good but then underneath the chicken was just like various pastes and vegetables. I don't even know what most of it was. It was, and it was all in the same bowl. And I don't even like milk on my cereal. So I'm, I kind of like my foods to be a little bit, a little bit separated. And it was very mixed together. And that was, that was a little over the top for me. Uh, I just wanted, I just wanted like a burger. Just, can, can we just have a burger? A normal burger, please. Uh, Richmond is very, I think history is probably the biggest thing. Uh, what do I put in my cereal? Uh, you, you gotta have milk on the side. If you put milk on it, then it gets soggy. We've we've talked about this before. Um, hmm. What is this card? When it enters the battlefield, connive. Well, I mean, I guess we just go infinite. Ingus. So now we cast the Ingus. Ingus is gonna make three treasures every time we do it. It's gonna gain a life with Prosperous and Keeper. We're missing a piece to draw our deck. But this gives us infinite mana and infinite and infinite life. Our opponent says good game. Good game to you. What is what is happening? Unplayable cost. Wait, are we just timing out? Why is this timing us out already? Oh no. Oh no. Okay, so maybe we're not just gonna win? All right, play the horn. Wow, the clock is going really fast on this. We needed one more piece. So we're infinite in every way, except we can't actually win. We can gain infinite life. We make infinite mana, but apparently our opponent's not gonna scoop to infinite life. So we still need one more, one more piece. So I think, the al yeah, alchemy, I don't know, what does this deck make you think about the alchemy format? I'm like, actually, ah. do they test this format, do you think? Do you think that wizards actually really test? Or do they just print anything and then assume that they're going to, going to nerf it after the fact? Decks like this, like, this does not feel like you're playing standard or something adjacent to standard. This feels like you're playing a, a modern deck or something almost. Like you're playing something that's way more powerful than what everyone else is doing in the format. I mean, obviously, yeah, the economy of alchemy is uh, not even worth, like we, it, it's busted. It's busted, it's horrible. Um, 
But I kind of feel like the the testing, like, do they really not think, oh, what if they combine this with Grinning Ingus? Like, isn't this a turn three, like, infinite mana combo or, like, turn four infinite life combo or infinite damage combo? I mean, it is, it's interesting. It's different. It's something that we've never really done before. So, all right, we're just going to, we're going to stop doing this for now and pass the turn. The Alchemy Draft is one of the worst draft formats I've ever played. Clearly not tested beyond checking for bugs. Sounds about right. Ellie made an Alluring combo with it and a Serac. There's, you know, I mean, you can do a lot of busted things with these cards. Yeah, I guess a Serac with Racketeer Boss could also also do things. About it. Hits us to 25. Well, this Horn, hopefully... Oh, we just need the Cabretti Revels or whatever. Or a land. Well, all right. Discard the land. Oh, that's... Uh, yeah, I forgot. Professional Phrase Baker also draws us our entire deck. I forgot. I forgot to mention that. I might as well play the Dina. Play the... I mean, and now it's up. That's it. That's game. That's game. You're an Angus. And about it. Done, done, done. Why is this a deck? Why is this a deck? <laughs> Yeah, we probably should have held on to the land. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, Professional Phrase Breaker with the infinite treasures lets us draw our deck and that finds whatever we want. So that's also part of the thing. Yeah, I I think that maybe Wizards test cards mostly for Commander now. I actually don't even know. Then they also print busted Commander cards. They, they definitely do test. I just don't know with the amount of cards that they make now. I feel like... I feel like with the amount of cards that they make now, they have to have way more people testing than they did a few years ago, and I'm not sure that they do. Like, I think they needed to, like, double the size of their testing team, or triple the size, because they're bringing two or three times more cards. But I don't think they, I don't think they scaled up their team in conjunction with the amount of products they make now. They, there's, no, uh, there's no way. We would have heard about a ton more people getting hired or something. So I feel like maybe that's the issue. Like, you have relatively the same in number of people theoretically designing like twice as many cards three times as many cards unfit pair and testing them too unfit parrot and mono green stumpy welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big stupid for you thank you thank you thank you i mean at the same time maybe that's why they like this alchemy format is you kind of don't need to test like if you can just if you can change the cards after the fact then there's not really any reason that you need to that you need to test the cards. You just trust that... You just trust that you can take care of it later. It's a modern software mentality. Release and fix as you go. Yeah, I think that kind of is where we're at. So what have y'all been doing for the last couple of weeks? Ooh. All right, this is fine. We got the Revels. This deck is even more hilarious when it goes off and you have the Revels. The Revels so... So, so sweet. Thanks again for signing my banner, Monica at Richmond. Sorry I didn't manage to get a game in, but it was only there Friday. Ugh. Next time. Next time, Alf. Yeah, it, that was my only regret about Richmond is it's there's so many people that I want to play games with, and there's... I think we got to take the boss. There's so many people that I want to play games with, and they're so... And they're so... Um, so few hours in the day. I, I got it as many as I could, but... Commander is also a long format. That's the other thing. Sometimes your commander games go like two or three hours, which limits the amount that you can get in. I hopefully might... So Syracuse is close to me, so there's a decent chance. And plus, I already got COVID. <laughs> so I think I should be like... I don't know. That's got to that's gotta help, right? I got to have some amount of... On top of being vaxxed and boosted and then just having COVID... I shouldn't be able to get it again a month from now. So that increases my odds of potentially going. Yoda man for the 48th month. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're going to get down the revel. And hopefully next turn we do sweet things. Yeah, this is the, the first time. Yeah, so if you saw the 30th anniversary thing, they didn't announce all... Oh boy, opponent's going off. They didn't announce all of it yet, but it looks like there's gonna be four of those. So they have the they have the Vegas one in the end of October, but it looks like they're gonna do them for all the Pro Tours next year, the paper Pro Tours, which is kind of exciting. So I think there's actually gonna be multiple options for this. Ugh. I don't know if we can get out of this. Uh, 
Oh, yes, this is, this is bad. This is real bad. Um. Ooh. Okay, so Blitz Jaxus, I think. Actually, wait. Is there a better way of doing this? We can Racketeer Boss. Jaxus and Roastmaster. Play the land. Blitz Jaxus. Oh my god, we hit the Ingus, but we don't have... Oh. Okay, let's think about this. So we pick up the Ingus. Can we live long enough for this to work? Make red mana. Copy the Racketeer boss. Discard. Roastmaster. Ingus. Roastmaster. Combat. I don't know if we survive. I mean, if we get to untap here, we're going to win, but I don't think we get to untap. Mr. Peaches! Welcome to the fishbowl. Uh, yeah, we need one more turn. Pony got off to the fast Rafine start. Another Dina. Another Ingus. I mean, if we live somehow, but if they can kill this, we're just going to die, right? We just die immediately. Been wondering where you were at. Welcome back. I know this is the longest I went without streaming in quite a while. Yeah, now we're dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, so it's not unbeatable. You can still just get Espered out. I was lucky enough to play four-player Baldur, uh, Baldur's Gate Draft and had a great time. I picked Rashad and Bashir. Uh, oh, the Butts Manor background. Yeah, that card's pretty cool. And one with it at one life. Every night a great time. Have to say it's a great set for limited. I didn't get to do any of the any of the drafts or pre-release events. I'm actually I'm actually curious how it was. Sometimes Commander is quick, like 40 minutes to an hour. I I've heard that those games exist. I've heard people talk about Commander games that only go an hour. I, I don't know if I've ever experienced one. I don't know if you've ever, ever actually had that happen, but in theory, I know it's possible. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the idea of Commander Legends, is it is limited that's also Commander. You, like, draft, but you draft a, you draft a Commander deck, essentially, a 60-card Commander deck. Ew. Many things that we want, but not enough. Ew. Not many things that we want, but okay. Uh, go, go, Roastmaster. I don't know if it's worth going all the way to five. Drafting was to our game was a little over one hour things to go to initiative. Yeah, that was one of the reasons I didn't do a pre-release event was... Well, I guess we're, I guess we're breaking faces. That was one of the reasons I didn't do a pre-release event was uh, just because I heard it took a long time. A lot of people were telling me it took them like four hours. And that's just a big time commitment when my main goal is just to get in as many games with people and meet as many and meet as many fans as possible. Ooh, triumphant adventure. Well, let's break some faces. The longest commander game I ever had was when someone ulted card and restarted the game. Could you imagine if they unmanned Shaharazad? <laughs> I kinda, I still, I still want that. And we've had this idea for a charity, a charity stream where everyone has to play Shaharazad. And then whenever someone restarts the game with Shaharazad, you like have new people come into the game and it just goes, I don't even know. It'd be probably be like a 24 hour game. It would be really, really funny. What does strangle kill here? Adventure? <laughs> You're like, gonna snipe this adventure. What paper decks did I play at Ridgeman? So I had four. So I had four paper decks. Uh, I had Marchesa, which someone was nice enough to give me uh, a long time ago now, a couple years ago now. So I had Marchesa. I had a Yarok deck that Doug sent me, a Day in Wildfire, which was super fun. And then I had a blink deck that I didn't ever really play because I felt guilty about it. <laughs> and, well, let's get in and make a treasure. Hit you make a treasure. Strangle a triumphant adventure. Play the land, Rose Master. 
go. And then, what was my fourth deck? Oh, uh, a, a another just blue-white Panther Monogon deck with with various commanders. Um, you can just play anything, any Azorius card. My favorite commander moment was someone had Hive Mine out and cast Goblin. I love, I love, love, love Goblin Game. Goblin Game is just such an absurd, such an absurd card. It's one of my favorite cards to cast. I still don't really know exactly how it works. Anytime your card says you have to hide an object, like what does that even mean? <laughs> what, what does that even mean? Got to play against Krim at the very end. Ooh, sweet. Tall dude, how are you? Good to see you, good to see ya. All right, opponent hits us, does some adventuring. We really need to find, huh. I mean, I guess we can draw with a face breaker potentially, but I don't know if that's gonna be enough. Opponent passes. Oh, oh, Cabretti Revels is good. Well, um, okay, okay, okay. <sighs> Go to combat. Hit ya. Get a treasure. Sack a treasure. Burgi. Oh, play the Rebel. Play the land. Burgi. Oh, Racketeer boss with nothing in hand. Awkward. Very awkward. Well, Pinya Pinya pass the turn. Ooh. Uh, do you think you'll try out some version of the Rafine Dalhouse deck I sent you? Ooh, can you send me the list again, Pyro? Possibly. I think the idea is uh, definitely really sweet. I think I, I think I have it saved somewhere. The connive, uh, the connive mechanic does seem like a perfect way to get Dalhouse going. About it. Venturing. Oh, we need a little bit more action. Hitting the Racketeer boss with nothing in hand is kind of the worst. I've sadly never played Paper Magic. I just got into Magic before Coven, discovered Commander. By the time I assembled a Joyer deck, lockdowns happened. Oh, do you think you will play at some point? Uh, Ener Enerves? Like, now that now that things are starting to happen again in Paper Magic, do you think you'd go to, like, a Command Fest or something ever? It is definitely fun. I mean, honestly, I'm more of a... I'm more of a online player too, really. I play way more, way more digital magic than I do paper magic, but paper, you get the gathering. Like that's the, that's the whole point of, of playing paper is you just get to meet a really awesome community. I got to say the community was like, the community is just so awesome. I know every community has issues and there's bad aspects of it or whatever. There can be toxic people. Any community is going to be like that. But uh, in general, the magic community, I think, is uh, uh, just such a such an awesome, awesome community. Ooh, going to Command Fest Indianapolis. Ooh, that sounds super fun. Yeah, Command Fest are a really good time. I actually, as someone who doesn't care about tournament stuff... I actually really, why are they passing with all this mana up? That is suspicious. Well, go attacking. Is there some, I don't know all the alchemy cards. Is there some flash thing we should be concerned about? What is, what is going on? We're mostly trying to get a treasure so we can draw a card. Okay, that wandering upper makes sense. That's fine. Couldn't really do anything about that anyway. Oh, what did you think of the prize support? Yeah, I, Krim Krim brought that up too. That the prize support he thought was pretty lacking. That was one of his one of his criticisms of the event. Well, we get a treasure. Play the scry land. Hmm. I mean, maybe that's worth it. We can kill something. Kill the adventure, probably. All right, let's... Yeah, I think we got to do that. So, Zach the treasure. Draw the Brittle Blast. 
Get rid of the adventurer. Make a mana that does nothing. Pass the turn. Yeah, we're not going off this game for sure. Hey Goldfish, have you already tried out Crusader Kings 3? I will bug you until you try it out. Knowing you were a Civ guy, I bet you would enjoy it. I haven't. I haven't. I think I would probably like it though. I should I should actually get on that. If you're hard enough tickets to get anything substantial, we paid at least $50 to be there, and then each event uh you played got you tickets. So I I didn't do any events. So I was playing in just the the open. I was playing in just kind of the open play area. So the events just aren't worth it with the current prize support. Is that the is that the TLDR basically? I wondered like ah, are events necessary to make a command fest good? But it is a really good point that it's expensive to get a ticket. Like even to get a one day ticket is like fifty bucks. It was like two hundred tickets for a collector pack. Jeez. Yeah, I remember, I think the Commander Precons were, were 500, something like that. And then a booster box, I don't even know. Uh, I'm the guy a few weeks ago sent you the meme EDH list. Blue Lake Drake Tribal with Seeker Rendezvous and Heater Archive. I tested it out a few days later and managed to be taken out last. Ooh. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Okay, this is... This is less than ideal. We gotta find a way to combo, and I don't know if we can. Oh, it's a tox roll? Jeez. Alright. Oh, Grinning Ingus. Oh, we're so close and yet so far away. Okay, this this might work. This might work, because we get to put all of our deck into play, right? So Grinning Ingus. Gets us an innkeeper. This should work. We should assemble the combo because we have the we have the revel. This is where revel's so good. Pick up the ingus, replay the ingus. So the burgee lets us cast this infinite number of times. That's gonna put every two drop into play. That's eventually gonna hit the Dina, and then we just win unless we time out. So we're gaining infinite life right now. This deck's so ridiculous. We're like so far. Our opponent's tox ruling and exiling our stuff. We didn't have a good hand at all, and we're still just gonna go infinite and <laughs> and absolutely kill our opponent. Absolutely just crush him. <laughs> we we got there. We got there. Racketeer boss doesn't do anything. The only question is do we time out with all these triggers resolving? Hitting another oh, opponent's at five. No, we're not gonna time out. We're gonna be good. Oh, hey, what's up, uh, Wick uh, Sindarati? How are you? I'm so glad to be back. It's been way too long since we have a, uh, we've had a stream. Command Fest, spoiler season, Command Fest, COVID all in a row. Hot chocolate made from heated, heavy whipping. Yes, deck's so busted. Uh, heated, heavy whipping cream and melted chocolate chips, dark chocolate cocoa, cayenne pepper. Ooh. The cayenne pepper is interesting. I I don't think I've ever had hot chocolate with cayenne pepper. Is it good? It sounds good. Hey, Marion, how are you? Good to see ya. Ha, oh, glad to be back. Yeah, I think the idea of this deck is really sweet. Dollhouse is a cool card. Dollhouse is a cool card. I really like the I really like the the Rafine plan for filling the graveyard. I, the the Voldaren Bloodcaster is interesting. I'm wondering if we could have more. Like, I wonder if we want more uh, Connive cards. I haven't got to play it yet. So, like, uh, is Fairy Vandal? Like, how good is the Fairy Vandal? Would it be better as just, like, another Conniver to get more stuff in the graveyard? Because that would be my only concern is, how do we fill the... How do we get the graveyard full? That's, that's the only question. Ooh. Okay. I mean, this is probably fine because of Forceful Cultivator. We should have no lands in hand. This does mean we gotta go green, green. So that would be my only question. Do we have enough ways to fill the graveyard? I guess the Bloodcaster helps. Rafine obviously is the all-star. But maybe like the Fairy Vandal or the Regulator or something could be, could be a little bit more conniving. But I really like the idea of it. The Mike Arnold for this 66 month. Welcome to the Fishball. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, so crossroads green, scry. <sighs> we'll keep it. All right, slow start, but it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, wait, so is cayenne pepper really a thing that people put on? Is that a thing that people really put on hot chocolate? What cards do I want to see in double masters? So, okay, when it comes to master sets, what I care about is is prices. I want the expensive cards. I think that, let me see if I can pull this up. My expectation is we're going to see, oh, there's Racketeer Boss too. That's good. Uh, well, let's go Cultivating. Grab a land. Play a land past the turn. So my expectation is we're going to see a lot of commander cards. I think that's going to be the focus of the set. Is primarily going to be on commander. Huh, I'm going to have to try hot chocolate with cayenne pepper now. I'm hoping that we get at least some. I think, uh, I think we might have messed up here. I think we wanted to get... Oh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. I think we wanted to, uh, I think we wanted to play, get another red source. Getting the third green source with this Forsaken Crossroads on green might come back to haunt us. We might be able to do cool things next turn, though. If we can Jaxus, oh, we still need, okay, so we Jaxus make a treasure, copy the Racketeer boss, double up on Ingus, and then combo? Well, opponent getting frisky. I mean, they are really getting through these dungeons pretty quickly. Uh, actually, let's block that way. Wow, this is this is a clock. Wow, I never play alchemy. Is dungeons like busted now? <laughs> now that they they uh, buffed all these cards, about it appears to have removal of some kind. So I want to see at least some good modern stuff. To go along with what I assume is going to be a lot of commander stuff. If you look at modern, we know we're getting bad Lily or like less good Lily. So I'm not expecting Lily. I'm not expecting Modern Horizons 2 stuff. I really, really, really hope that we at least get the good Modern Horizons 1 stuff. Like Force Negation, Ren and Six. We already know Ren and Six is in. Um, Force Negation, Ren and Six. Uh, maybe another Jace reprint. <laughs> Mox Amber is apparently super expensive now, but like Season Pyromancer. So good Modern Horizons one stuff stone forge mystic uh the stuff that'll help as much as they can with modern i don't think we can expect ragavans i don't think we can expect stuff they just printed last year uh, to be reprinted that soon i think it's just too soon but i do think the modern horizons one stuff would be good like, more canopy lands would be would be sweet as well oh we actually got to play our turn i guess all right let's see if we can do this so one two blitz a jaxis get a treasure And then Jack says, copy Racketeer Boss, discard a braid. Oh, okay. Okay. That's big. Grinning Ingus, Burgy. Now we get to Grinning Ingus, go infinite. So I think we, we should win here. In theory, in theory, pick it up, replay it, <laughs> pick it up, replay it, busted. I mean, and then I'm also hoping that we get the high end uh, commander, commander stuff. That would be the other, that'd be the other stuff. We didn't get great reprints in Baldur's Gate. We still really need. The, the Mana Crypt style stuff. Mana Crypts, um, unfortunately, Dockside Extortionists, if they're not going to... Yes, yeah, text. it's absurd. It's absurd. <laughs> it really, really is. All right, so we make all the mana. We can play the Burgy to make even more mana. I still think our opponent could have removal. Maybe they're waiting for the, for the Finisher. 
See if we can bait him to kill the Burgie here. They definitely have removal. Wow, they're just not going to do it. So the question is going to be, do we even go for it? Or do we just... Are they just going to kill the Rose Master? Almost certainly. Maybe that's fine. Rose Master. I mean, I think we do have to go for it. Because we're going to die to these... We're going to die to these Gargoyles anyway. A Ruckalypse! Welcome to the Fishbowl. Yeah, we were trying to see if we can get them to play... They seem like they have a removal spell, but maybe... Maybe they don't. Ingus, cast it. <laughs> okay. So, opponent does... They do have the removal spell. Which means we're going to have to top deck something. So, we're going to have infinite mana. Infinite times a million. But we don't actually just get to win the game, which is unfortunate. Alright, so we'll make a bunch of treasures. Pass the turn. You also have an attack step with Jax's possible draw on attack step. Oh, that's true. We if they kill this, we get to draw. Yeah, Alright, we got that's enough mana for now. Let's attack with this. We do get two draws with Jaxus. Opponent's gonna block. Come on, Dax. Show us that finisher. Oh, okay. That actually kind of is a finisher. <laughs> it doesn't win us a game, but it does let us gain infinite life to go with our infinite mana, which is a uh, yeah, that's helpful. That's helpful at the moment. Yoan Leafar, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh, Pioneer Hammer time. Let me see. We played a version. We played a version of Pioneer Hammer Time a few weeks ago, and it was pretty sweet. But I felt like it could have been better. Ooh, Mardu Hammer Time. Leather Armor's a card. Hang on, I'll, I'll put it up on screen after we finish doing it. And opponent! <laughs> they've decided they've had enough. Leather Armor's a card that's, uh, that's interesting. Hmm. Shadow Sphere Mirror Shield. It's an interesting equipment package. Hexproof is nice. Leather armor. Leather armor is... Huh. Does that do enough? Equip for free is nice. They had to make you do it once each turn so you can combo with it, I guess. Cephalid breakfast combos. I like the Mardu idea. I like that you have more warriors and more one drops. Uh, that was one of the things that was weird with the build we played is it was... <laughs> Bore your opponent to death, indeed. <laughs> uh, they're really... Yeah, I know. They really need to find a way to deal with infinite combos better. Not just on Arena, but Magic Online, too. Like, both... Uh, just digital is tough when it comes to infinite combos. When are you doing viewer submitted week next? I want to submit my uh, Sinai Top Deck Shenanigan deck. Oh, uh, so I think two or three weeks. So we got a theme for this week that's not viewer submitted. We were thinking about doing viewer submitted next week, but we might push it back one week so we can do one episode of Commander Legends stuff. They didn't add a lot of Commander Legends stuff to Moto, but they did add they did add some. We got a we got a few. We got a few cards. So what do you want to see in Modern Horizons or <laughs> Modern Horizons, Double Masters 2022. What's the top of your, is there any like specific card that you really want? What are we sideboarding in here? So opponents just got creatures for days. Maybe a strangle is not that good. Brittle Blast seems good. And then I guess a braid can hit those gargoyles too, right? I promise we won't just, we won't just keep alchemy. We'll, uh, we'll switch up and play some Play some Explorer in, in, a, in a match or two. I also wish it would make some reprints for Pauper. Like, snuff out uh, Ninja of the Deep Hours, Priest of Titania, other expensive common and uncommons. Is there anything that's actually prohibitively expensive in Pauper right now? I know they finally reprinted uh, Obliet, which was the card everyone would talk about. Allied Fetchlands would be sweet. Force of Will... Do you think, do you think, let's say Mana Crypt or Force of Will, let's say they reprinted those cards enough, they were like $5. Do you think that would be a positive for a format like Commander? Would that be a good thing or a bad thing? Ooh, Lotus Petal, that's, yeah, that is, that is a big one. 
Would that be a good thing or a bad thing? So obviously the good news is you'd be able to play copies of it without spending a ton of money. On the other hand, it would probably mean you'd see those cards a lot more often, which, uh, like, I don't think Soul Ring should be in Commander. I think Soul Ring, I think Soul Ring should be banned. I feel like if Mana Crypt was $2 instead of $200, it would basically just be another Soul Ring that everyone would put in every single deck. Did people uninstall that arena because of Alchemy still have uninstalled? I think that Explorer... I think that Explorer went a long way towards fixing a lot of people's issues with Alchemy. That's my that's my perception, at least. Now, let's just... Yeah, I guess we just play Forceful Cultivator. Force of Will would be fine. I feel like Force of Will, if everyone's playing Force of Will, doesn't it kind of CEDHify the format a little bit? I don't know. I feel uh, there's this weird tension where I feel like if everyone's playing, if everyone's playing those cards, I feel like it puts more pressure on everyone else to play those cards to keep up. We were actually just having a conversation about this with Commander Clash uh, on the Commander Clash podcast regarding uh, Mana Crypt. And Mana Crypt's one of those cards that's like, if no one else is going to play it, I'm fine with not playing it. I think the format's better without it. But if everyone else is playing a card like Mana Crypt, or maybe even a better example, Soul Ring. Hey, what's up, Zach? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Ooh, let me see, dog. But if everyone else is going to play Soul Ring, and then you choose not to play Soul Ring, then I think you're kind of at a at a big disadvantage to some extent because Soul Ring's just like such a explosive card, and you're never gonna have those games where you just accidentally win with it like other decks will. That's kind of why I wish they would manage the ban list more. <sighs> I don't know, more on power level, I guess. Like, Soul Ring is a busted card on power level. It leads to degenerate starts. I think if the ban list cared about power level, then you ban Soul Ring. It's the most powerful card in the format. But because they because that's not what the commander ban list is about, you end up with with this weird mismatch of of cards on the ban list. It's funny, uh, Brad Nelson, uh, I'm sure most of you know who Brad is, uh, one of the best, like, pro Magic players uh, in the last decades, um, really, really good Magic player, has just been getting into Commander, and it's been very interesting to watch, to watch Brad figure out Commander stuff, stuff that if you play Commander for a while, you just kind of, like, almost take for granted, um, like, why Why is Primeval Titan banned? We all know that Primeval Titan is banned for no super good reason. But but if you're not new to Commander, it, it's pretty jarring. And it's really interesting to see to see that perspective that, uh, that if you've been playing for the format for a while, it just goes right over. You just look right past it. You just accept that, oh, I don't know. It's it's on the ban list. So it's always been there. For some reason, Dockside's fine, but Primeval Titan's not. We don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> but if you're a new player, you're like, wait, Primeval Titan's banned. Wait, what? why is this Dockside card a thing? <laughs> so Primeval Titan was banned 10 years ago, back when the format was a lot different than it is today. Before we had so much power creep, uh, at a time when it actually was like a, a scary card, but the format's just been power creeped so much that I don't think it's still, it, it, I mean, especially compared to something like Dockside, I don't think it's still a scary card. I think it was a scary card for its era a decade ago, um, or at least compared to Dockside. Compared to Dockside, I don't think it's very easy to justify the banning. All right, opponent, more removals. Yeah, we might just be dying here. Play the land, play the Rose Master. Opponent. Was it Primetime banned even earlier than that? I feel like it was banned. When was Primetime banned in Commander?
Yeah, it was banned in, in 2012. 2012, so pretty, pretty soon after. I mean, I guess it had been out for a couple of years. Yeah, I think we're losing this one. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what any of these cards do. <laughs> I know they're all better than they actually are, but I don't actually know what any of them really do. Uh, well, played Dina. I'm pretty sure we're just straight up dead here, though. Opponents at 22. We got no combo pieces. Opponent has removal for days, apparently. Uh, Blitz of Jaxus. None of this stuff actually is going to matter, though. For me, they'll tie in. One of the concerns we've had recently is the... <laughs> it reads so quaint. Oh, my God. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna we're gonna read this in just a minute. Oh my god. <laughs> it is so it is, it is so ridiculous. <laughs> just through the at the time I think it made sense. At the time it made sense. But reading this through the lens of 2022 Commander, okay. Why was Primeval Titan banned? <clears throat> One of the concerns we've had recently is the overrepresentation of heavy ramp strategies to the point where they make up a large portion of the aggregate decks out there. It, it, almost every deck some sort of heavy ramp deck now. Why we think that ramp should be good, this is battle cruiser magic after all, it's probably a little too prevalent and it needs to be reined in a bit. With that in mind, we're banning the most egregious offender, Primeval Titan, a six drop that gets two lands. Dockside Extortionist makes, I don't even know, 10 mana on turn three and that's and that's kosher, but Primeval Titan, two lands on a six drop. Ramps, ramps just too good. The decision won't be universally popular. Primeval Titan is dripping with awesomeness and we ourselves are big fans of the cards, but its ubiquity and effect on games couldn't be ignored and sad though we are to see it go. We think it'll make for a more interesting and diverse format. <laughs> So, in defense of the RC, in defense of the RC, and I love to meme on Commander Ban List because it's just so funny to me, but in defense of the RC, you got to remember this was a decade ago. Look at the most played cards in Commander. Kira Ashmore, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at the most played cards in the format. Many of those did not exist at the time. It was Battle Cruiser Magic. There was no EDA track. There was no list of the best cards. There was no Commander pre cons every single set there was no commander legends every couple of years there was no modern horizons none of those things existed so when the rc wrote this it was kind of logical like ramp is ramp is really good and primeval titan's good at ramping when you think about the cards that exist today dockside smothering tithe all that kind of stuff the idea that somehow primeval titan is across the line and all those other cards are fine it's it's just it's absurd it's through the lens of 2022 the idea that somehow primeval titan is too broken is just it's it's silly it's laughable but in 2012 i think it i mean it was at least justifiable in 2012 i think if you want to know why it was banned kibler had a commander game last night where he cloned titan of industry he ended up with 12 in one turn now imagine Primeval Titan. Yeah, but like I had a commander game where you played a dockside on turn three and did that and it's a two drop. At least Titan of Industry is a seven drop. Primeval Titan's a, a six drop. Like we have things that just take over the game that are two mana if you're gonna clone them a bunch of times. Like imagine replace Titan of Industry with Dockside Extortionist and you're just as dead. <laughs> like you and you're just as broken. So I, I know that that's true, but I feel like there's just so many cards that do essentially the same thing that to me it seems silly that Primetime is like singled out for that issue. When if you copied Agent of Treachery a bunch of times, if you copied a Dockside a bunch of times, if you copied, you know, a lot of uh, 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 Avengers Endicar a bunch of times, like you're, pr you're still going to win. <laughs> I actually think that Primeval Titan tutoring up two card land combos to me, that is the best justification for keeping a band, honestly. That is the one thing that I, that people will say uh, in defense of keeping it banned that I actually am like, okay, I can kind of see that. Like, <laughs> I can kind of see that. Are you a fan of Jacob Collier? I don't think I know who Jacob Collier is, so I'm going to go with no, considering <laughs> who who is Jacob Collier? What, is, what does Jacob do? Should I know who Jacob Collier is? 
Cloudy Music, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Alright, so there goes the innkeeper, but we're untapping with the revel, which should hopefully be helpful. Opponent plays on land. Gargoyle ventures into a dungeon. Hmm. Okay, so how do we do this? Play Rose Master. Get an innkeeper. Get a treasure. Adventure awaits. Get a ingus. Pass the turn. About it. British singer won four Grammys for a huh. I'll have to I'll have to look it up. I'm not familiar with him. Opponent gets in, hits his four. Play is, adventure is a lot better when it's got an extra power, isn't it? As a one one, it's not that scary. As a two one, it's actually like kind of a clock. About it. Ventures into a dungeon. Could really use a land. I feel like if we hit a land, we can win this turn. Okay, so we rack it here. Oh, we can't win this turn, can we? We gotta wait another turn? Well, okay, so Racketeer boss. Target these two. Land on green. Adventure awaits. Get it, Ingus. Attack the Planeswalker. All right. Next turn's hopefully the turn. Opponent ventures into a dungeon. How bad is it? Life Observer, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, I mean, what do you think? Is is primetime still across the line? Should it should it be banned? So my problem isn't that primetime's banned. Primetime very well might be unhealthy for the format. My issue, just so it's clear. My issue, just so it's clear, is that primetime is banned when cards that I think are just as degenerate are not. And they do the same, they are, that are also ramp cards. Like, cards that are equally degenerate, like Dockside, are not banned. So it's a consistency thing. I, I would say that from my perspective, either primetime should be unbanned, or you should be banning, like, the Docksides of the world. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. The commander ban list, it's it's something else. I changed unfortunately, temporarily. I got the I got the backup. This is my old camera. Uh yesterday I came into the office and there's there's Barbie uh chewing on on some computer wires and he chewed through the power cord to my to my main camera, my good camera. So I got the I got the backup going until I get the power cord in tomorrow or Thursday. So hopefully I'll have it for the next stream. Thankfully, thankfully I didn't get electrocuted or anything, which that's my real fear. Like I can replace cords. I've already had to replace. Oh my God. I try to keep a backup of every cord just because, just because I know that eventually if I'm not careful, it'll end up chewing through them. So I try to keep backups. I didn't have the backup of that one, but I'm more worried that he's gonna, that he's gonna end up being electrocuted. That's my that's my real fear. All right, one more one more storm game and then uh and they'll play some explorer. He's just so cute though. Yeah, all right, there's a racketeer. This hand is something. It's a it's a very witty hand. Hey, Ricker, how are you? Opponent. Oh, don't take our racketeer boss. No, no, no. You want to take a face breaker? A witty roast master, please. <laughs> That's a good idea. That I try to just keep him away from the wires, but that doesn't always work. You can't watch him 24 hours a day, unfortunately. But that's that's my current strategy. I tried to keep him from chewing on the wires by putting stuff on it. Oh, we really needed a land. Uh, wow, why are they playing Velky in a in an Esper deck? 
I don't know if I've ever seen anyone play Valky when they couldn't cast the Planeswalker side. The front side's just not good enough. Is a four-color Omnath pile casual or EDH? Uh, I think it depends on... You know what? Do we even want to play this game? Do we just scoop? <laughs> I think it depends on what is in your... What specific cards are in your deck? Like, I think that's... I think that's what it comes down to. Can you build a casual five-color Omnath pile? For sure. Um, could you build a pretty busted five-color Omnath pile? Yes. I think that Omnath is... I think that Omnath is on the higher end of, of commander power level. So I think that's something to keep in mind. If you're going to build Omnath, it's going to be really easy for that to be broken, even if you intend for it not to be. So if you want to build it casually, I think you're going to have to intentionally make choices to power it down because it's going to have a, a tendency. It's going to have a tendency to be an upper power level casual deck, I think. if Because what makes Omnath so powerful is is it just works with the ramp spells you want anyway. That's why Landfall, same with Tetyova or Asai, any commander who does something from lands coming into play tends to be really strong and casual just because you're already going to be playing stuff like Kadama's Reach and Cultivates or Explosive Vegetations, Rampant Gross. So the stuff that you're playing in your deck as ramp spells also turns into combo pieces with your commander. So I think you got to be, it's just something to be aware of. So I think you can build a casual version of it. You're just going to have to uh, have to be aware of the fact that it would be really easy for it to dominate some like mid power casual tables. Does Reddit Reddit hates this deck? <laughs> I know this is the first time I've played Alchemy in forever. This deck came across my oh, no. What is this card? So I didn't even honestly, I did not even look through the last Alchemy release. I didn't I didn't even bother to look at it. I was just like, yeah, whatever. Um, but then this deck came across my Twitter and anytime I can storm off in a non like modern legacy format, it's always, it's always kind of appealing. Cause it's just so rare that a storm deck exists. Yeah. We're going to switch to Explorer in a minute. I wonder if the creature that doubles power when you play a creature would bug this out. Ooh. Yeah, if you could get that down before the combo, it would just win the game. I think, well, we, we maxed that card out before. Man, look at them drawn cards. Um, all right, Burgie, again. Our opponent doesn't want to get comboed. I don't know what's up with them. Uh, I don't think it would be better. I think that... I think that Devilish Ballet would be less good at winning games. But... But... Um, it would be spicy. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, they have key to the archive. Alright, so maybe we don't win. We might win. We'll see if our opponent can do anything with the key to the archive mana. Did they... Did they change this? What does this do? Wait, where did... <laughs> when did this key to the archive come into play? I'm paying too much attention to the chat. <laughs> Dragon control. Ooh, that sounds uh, that sounds sweet, Zummy. I will, I will look at it. Uh, all right, so play the land. Grinning Ingus. Oh, that was the card that they hit? Okay. Wait, can we still do it? Can we still do it? We can. Roastmaster, we got him. We got him anyway. Roastmaster. Even through the removal, even through the Dox roll, it's... Uh, they definitely could not have... There's no way that they knew this deck existed, I don't think. I don't think there was any way... I don't think there's any way that Wizards knew this deck was a thing, or they would not have... I don't think they would have made the cards. Like... 
This doesn't feel like a standard a standard adjacent format. Seth, uh, going back to Primeval Titan, with all the one and two CMC creature removal, uh, along with the increase of board wipes for the past 10 years, doesn't that limit how long Primeval Titan may stay on the board in today's Commander? That's true, but it is a card that gets its value right away. So I think the if the worry is the game is going to devolve into people copying Primeval Titans, that might be less of a worry because you're right that someone's probably going to kill it. If the worry is it comes down and gets Urborg Coffers or Dark Depths, Thespian Sage or whatever, um, and it just get, or it just double ramps, then that's kind of a concern. I also, what about this? What do you think about Sylvan uh, Primordial? Sylvan Primordial is a card that, that's another one that I've, I, I think I'm in the minority here, but I've never really understood fully why. I've never really understood fully why that's banned. It comes down, it blows up a land for each opponent, and you get to, you get to get lands, but it's seven mana. It's seven mana. You could be getting, a crater hoofed or insurrection like is that really i mean i guess you have the same concern that it sits out and gets copied a bunch and things devolve into into just battles over copying it or whatever but still it, it's seven mana it's seven mana but coalition victory you, you might get coalition victory <laughs> literally literally win the game <laughs> Speaking of things I don't understand the ban list, I could go on all day about the commander ban list. I coalition victory. <laughs> Seriously, coalition victory. That's like one of the hardest against the odds card we ever tried to pull off. Like that is not a not an easy win con. You need to be five color. You need to have all five colors of creatures or a five color creature, and you need to have seven mana, and it needs to resolve. So for some reason, so that is. That's across the line. The idea that you might have five colors of creatures, five colors of land, and seven mana, uh, that's that's just too much. That's gotta be on the ban list. But Thassa's Oracle, <laughs> Thassa's Oracle on the other hand, two mana to cast, uh, very, you can't really interact with it without counter spells either. Combos with things that cost one mana, doesn't have any extra requirements. No, 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 that's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's good. That's good, clean, fair magic. <laughs> but coalition victory. <laughs> I actually, Revel and Rich is a card that I used to like Revel and Rich is. I used to think it was like a fun alt win condition. On the other hand, I think that with all of the... With all of the treasure support we're getting now, it's slowly getting less interesting for me, where it's becoming too easy. Like, it used to be, making 10 treasures used to take some work. But now you got Blue Legger Stash, you got, you just have so many cards that can make treasure. You got Professional Facebreaker, you got Dogside Extortionist. So it's, it's lost some of its appeal to me. I'm not anti it, and I still throw it in some decks, but... It's not as exciting as it was before. I like my alt win cons to to be a little bit hard. If they're too easy, then they're not fun. That's why I'm like I'm fully in cap laboratory maniac. Yeah, I don't know why your opponent's sitting through this, but uh, but they are. It gives us time to talk about the commander ban list. Um, like laboratory maniac, I really like. I still really like because it's less powerful than Thassa's Oracle. Uh, decks that are not blue can actually interact with it. Someone can kill it before you draw a card. There's ways that it can go wrong. So I'm much more, I don't know if our opponent was trying to be gracious and let us show off our combo, or if they were trying to punish us for comboing by making us click a, mil a million times. I'm not 100% not sure. <laughs> oh, all right, let's look at these decks. Abzan Enchantment. There was actually, oh, there was this Pioneer deck. I don't know if any of you saw it. It was Mono White. <laughs> it was Mono White Enchantment Prison. It was like every Vanishing Light, every uh, Cast Out, Sphere of Safety, every every single one of those cards. The whole deck, it was two OG Heliods. The old Enchantment one that's like pay for, make a 2-1. Two of those, every other card in the deck was like Sphere of Safety, Vanishing Light, Cast Out, uh, Oblivion Ring, every single one. Any enchantment based removal spell. And I wanted to try to play an Explorer, but I think it really needs Nykthos. I was looking at that's the one thing we're really missing is Nykthos. Um, because you need the Nykthos to make all these enchantments and then make a bunch of tokens with Heliod. So it was really hilarious. Maybe we'll just play it in, in Pioneer. But, um, but yeah, I don't think we can play it in Explorer yet. 
The enchant uh, enchantment deck looks sweet. Ah, oh, big Garrick. Garrick's really powerful when he gets going. I like this idea of an Enchantress. It's kind of like bigger in Saga Eater rather than uh, rather than just trying to cast all the most inexpensive enchantments possible, which I like. I like that. Uh, all right, we're up against Control. What do we have? Tamio Safekeeping. I guess that's mm, Tamio Safekeeping. Good enough. All right, we're gonna uh, switch to Explorer after this. Oh no, someone. Someone sent a panharmonic on deck, and I i don't know what happened to it. I didn't pull it up in time. If you're still here, I'd love to see the panharmonic on deck. The gates deck looks good. I don't know about Azusa. I tend not to play Azusa in gates, but with 28 lands, it might be fine. Gates was a deck that when we last played it, we had expressive iteration. I don't think expressive iteration matters, though. Like, honestly, it would, we were just playing it because it's a strong card. It's not something that's, like, necessary. Oh, wait, I do have the Panharmonic on deck. It's not something that's necessary, so you can easily replace it. Quitter, welcome to Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ooh. I've been thinking we need to do Explore Monicon. We haven't actually played Explore Panharmonicon yet. Stomper seems like a big new addition. I like Sanctuary Warden a lot. Titan of Industry. Oh, I like the amount of new cards that are in this deck. <laughs> that looks that looks exactly like my kind of deck. I will say. Uh, well, let's do some Prospering. Don't really want to Racketeer boss on Burgie and Facebreaker. We'd rather... Rather get something better. To, wow, really? Divine Purge. Okay. Well, uh, in that case, we will do some reveling. King Kringlemeister. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, what else did Strix even have? Semester's End is a cool card. Although I feel like they... I feel like they already power crept it in Commander Legends. Oh, God. Wow, we're actually close to winning already, aren't we? Um... Okay, can we win right now? Ingus, Bounce, Ingus. We're probably better off playing Burgi, I guess. Yeah, let's... Actually, wait. So if we play this... We don't get a treasure. You know what? We just gotta play Burgi. Let's play Burgi. I mean, if Burgi sticks, we win next turn. And we get a... <laughs> Alright, Goro Goro. Well, that's, that's fine, Goro Goro. Haste them in. Here they come. Beat down plan. This also means our opponent's going to stop drawing cards, which is nice. So it was actually kind of a good hit in a weird way. So Master's End is a sweet card, though. What percentage of decks would you say came from ideas presented by viewers? Wow, more Divine Purges. <laughs> yeah. All right, opponent's trying not to die. Oh, we're still short. Still short. Um. Hmm. All right, face breaker. Get an innkeeper. <sighs> Pass the turn. A better adapts. So I definitely get some ideas from viewer decks. Percentage. Wow. What? Begin of each end step. If you gain four more life, make it okay. Never, never actually seen anyone play that card, but sure. Bonus gains some life. Draws a card. Uh, what percentage of decks are influenced by viewer decks? I would say like maybe twenty-five, somewhere in that, somewhere in that range. All right, Raggeteer, we're just gonna do this. Opponents tap down. Raggeteer boss. Target the Ingus. Like this should be, this should be enough. Cause we get to tutor all of our two drops out. So I think this should win us the game. All right, double innkeeper. Pick it up. We know our opponent's not a scooper, unfortunately. So when mask would Nexus affect Progenitus? It would. Uh, Progenitus would have all creature types. 
Protection keeps it from being targeted or damaged by anything. But something that just sets the rules. Uh, okay, yep. Well, on to explore. But, uh, but yeah, uh, this deck is insane. So if you're a dirty, dirty alchemy player who enjoys your fake magic cards and you want to crush everyone because wizards uh, printed a literal storm deck into the format, <laughs> then uh, here you go. <laughs> oh, this deck, so... I mean, you could do the same thing in, in Historic. I assume it would get harder in Historic because there's cheap, like, thought seizes and whatnot, but... Deck so busted. All right, let's let's do some big, uh, let's do some exploring. On to the real formats. As we move on, a quick reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards, you can get them over at CardKingdom.com. Yeah, it's it does let you do wild things. This is actually the first alchemy deck I've played. Wow, since winter, <laughs> since like Kamigawa, maybe. I've just mostly stopped playing alchemy altogether. But the storm deck caught my caught my attention. All right, so what do you want to see? Here's here's our options today for exploring. Four color adventures, which is, which is kind of. Which is kind of, ah, I mostly, I'm being facetious. Every format's real. This one, Alchemy just is, it feels less real because the cards are constantly changing. The digital only cards actually, for me, digital only cards don't make a format not real. I can easily think of the digital only cards as uh, the equivalent of modern masters, but for arena. So the digital only cards actually is not a deal breaker for me. I actually don't care. Like that's fine. But the rebalance cards actually drives me crazy. Like that I liked a lot less than I thought. When they first said it, I was kind of like, oh, I hope they don't go wide with this and bring it to other formats, but okay. Um but okay, we can we can try it. Uh, but after actually playing with it, I don't like that my staples just their text changes every month or whatever. And I even like it even less if they're doing it with like iconic cards. They're doing it with like Omnath. They're doing it with Teferis and Explore. It just feels so weird to me. So that's the part that that's the part that feels unreal is when it's like, hey, there's a card I just played against in standard, but the text is different. That's the part that gets me. All right, so voted down no to to uh, adventures so far. We also have uh, a a Nullhide Ferox fight rigging back. I forgot about good old uh, Nullhide Ferox. It does work. Six minutes, six six has proof. Downside is we can't cast non creature spells. A little bit of a non bow, but people get paid two to get around that ability. Plus, if we discard it, we get to uh, put it on the battlefield. There were some blowouts when this was in standard, where your opponent would accidentally make you uh, discard it, and then you just get a you get a free six six and just get them. Yeah, we did play Adventure Knights, and then we have a couple of a couple of Luca E Cheetah Titan of Industry deck into play. This one is is kind of a Gruel Transmogrify deck. I just I love Titan of Industry. I think Titan of Industry is such a sweet card. Uh, so this one we're kind of trying to Transmogrify our Luca into Titan of Industries. Trust that that's gonna win the game. I got Couriers, Briefcases, and Friends to uh, actually Transmogrify off of, and then this Jun deck is also. I'm curious if the Adventure deck actually works. It was so good in standard and so busted in standard, but I've never seen anyone play it in, uh, in Explorer. Uh, and then this deck, I think, is intriguing because it's kind of Jun mid-range. If you look at the deck, Thought Sees You, Graveyard Trespasser, Bone Crusher, but it's got a surprise that it's also Luka, which can sack Trespasser or Bone Crusher Giant or Azekas Chariot to get a Titan of Industry. So essentially Jun mid-range that randomly could just put a Titan of Industry into play, which is, I think, interesting. Alchemy would be more funny if you play old gold cards. People, people want to see adventures. All right, let's let's try some adventuring. Let's try it. No lie, uh, everyone wants. Okay, let's let's start with let's start with adventures, and then maybe try some null hide action. So this is actually very similar, very very similar to uh to the standard deck. Honestly, hang on, let me export this real quick. Um. It's very, very similar to the standard deck where it's all the adventure stuff and Lucky Clover to power it up. Also has some Omnaths, which Omnath is a, is a really interesting card in Explorer and Pioneer. It's a card that is incredibly broken. 
when you have access to fetch land. It was broken in standard. It was broken in modern. Um, but in Pioneer, we're kind of in this weird spot where you don't have fetch lands. So it's kind of like okay-ish. Like it's strong and sometimes it gets you, but it's also not dominating the format. So what we really want to do with this deck, Edgewell Innkeeper, Lucky Clover, those are the payoff. Cast Adventure cards, see what happens. Draw a bunch of cards, Beatsong Giant, copy stuff a bunch of times, tutor out our home runs from the sideboard. We got Dirty Ugans and Body of Researches and you name it, we got it in the sideboard to grab with our Fae of Witches. And that's essentially the essentially the plan of the deck. We can try. If, it, if you don't like it, we'll switch to some Null Hiding or something. Uh, 4C Adventures. I think it's a, I think it's an interesting idea. We'll see. Eldorain, Eldorain was busted when it was, uh, <laughs> when it was in standard, but is it still busted? Uh, all right, let's, let's do some exploring. What have y'all been playing in, uh, what have y'all been playing in Explorer? Or what have you been playing, period? It's been two weeks, I can't believe it's been two weeks since we have a stream. That's the longest we've went without a stream in a long time. Also, curious, is anyone going to uh, gonna try to go to the 30th anniversary thing? Uh, I mean, this is fine. Lucky Clover and a Beanstalk Giant is pretty good. Grease Fang, eh? How is the, how has the Enchantress deck been working, uh, dog? Been drafting SNC and it's been a blast. Interesting, I've heard a lot of people complaining about SNC Limited. I'm not much of a limited player these days. I like limited. I don't. I just don't get a chance to play it much. But I, uh, I've heard a lot of people saying that SNC limited just isn't good, which is weird because Wizards normally has uh, really good limited lately. Like the last couple of years, almost every limited set it seems like people love. About it. Oh, are we up against a crim? Eldorain versus Grixis Control. I don't know. I really only play Limited Cube and EDH. All EDH right now my LGS has Friday Night Commander again. Ooh, what are you uh, what are you EDHing? Okay, unfortunate. Coligan's Command, eh? Well, play a land. Means Dog Giant. Feral Footsteps. Get a land. Pass the turn. It's been pretty good so far. Nice mid-range feel. Can compete against Agorn Control. It looks really fun. I like Sagas. Sagas are just such a cool card type. Graveyard Trap. Wow, that is unfortunate. They had Coligan's Command. Well, let's keep ramping. Get a... Planes. Heart's Desire. Untap land. I mean, next turn we can just start casting Beanstalk Giants. I don't know. Uh, with my friends, <clears throat> I don't know. With my friends, it was so much fun. I built a four color Esper Bant. Ooh, that that sounds a uh, super sweet. Uh, all right. Well, discard. So opponents like a discard deck, maybe. Gets and hits us. Sure, sure, sure. No blocks. Well, go, go, Beanstalk Giants, I guess. Getting to explore, even when playing Hyper Budge, has been brutal since Join Arena. Too late. Yeah, that is that is a downside of this format, for sure. It is not a super budget format, by any means. I mean, oh, really? Playing Sensor, eh? Sensor! Sat in 2022. Um, this would have been a great matchup for the Null High deck. <laughs> Less good for the try to cast cool thing, uh, try to cast adventure guards deck for sure, since our opponent's apparently a believer in censorship. Um, <sighs> huh. All right, pass the turret, I guess. I feel like this is a bad spot because our opponent can kill. <sighs> yes, Graveyard Glutton's a problem. 
Our opponent is all removable. Opponent managed to draw four lands in all the... And all the interaction makes a vampire. Well, okay, let's borrow the vampire. Stomp the Soren. Beanstalk giant. Land. Hit ya. Oh, but this Crocs is coming back. This Crocs is going to be coming back. Can't be mad about sensor. It's basically mana tithe. It's blue, though. That defeats the whole purpose. It defeats the entire purpose. If your counter spells blue, it's not It's not get up. One exception is rune boggle. If you rune boggle me, your counter is just so horribly overcosted that I, I will accept it. <laughs> All right, let's let's tutor something from our sideboard. The question is what? We need to not die. Which is a is a legit concern at the moment. <laughs> Body of research. Sometimes you just need a 4343. <laughs> uh, should we take escape? Escape maybe? <sighs> That would draw us cards. One, two. I guess we don't have the mana to cast it immediately, do we? Huh. Being able to... Wow, it is pretty cool that you can body a research thud out of the sideboard for the fling kill. Rip. I mean, rest in peace would be fine. All right, yeah, let's let's rip. That does deal with the the Crocs of forever. Opponents only got two cards. This is also going to mean that this graveyard, graveyard glutton is no longer no longer going to be able to drain us at least. Opponent passes and flips. Well, let's heart's desire. Mega one one. Love struck beast. We might be good. The Alderaid might be coming through. Dark Confident. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank ya. Oh, is Cardboard Life not on? The deck command will get you there. Oh, no. How's the... I don't know what the desktop states in today. Am I getting yelled at? Oh, that's... There's there's plenty of space over here on the right. Yeah, we're, we're good. We're good. You don't even got to invert your eyes this time, chat. We're, we're fine. Look at that. I'm a responsible desktopper at the moment. That is ample, ample space for icons. Uh, uh, all right. Cardboard Live should should be firing up now. About it. <laughs> hey, what's up, Frogler? That, that, for me, that is super clean. If you have ever, ever seen my desktop when it's unclean. My current rule is... My current rule is when it starts to spill over on my second monitor, that's when I know I gotta do something. Nostra tra. Welcome to the fishbowl. Oh my god. Oh. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was, uh, that was a spicy meatball. Civil Would you watch a Civilization stream? I don't stream non-magic games very often. I do love Civilization. You haven't have you ever have you ever done mods on Civilization? You haven't really played Civilization until you uh, <laughs> until you put on all the the modded wonders. Uh, you play Spain. Here's my favorite way to play Civ now. I've I've beat Civ on like just so many different levels. I don't even want to think about the amount of hours I've put into Civ. But here here is a, here's the best way to play Civ. You download all the mods with uh, with wonders. You, there's a mod that lets <laughs> there's a mod that lets uh spain i don't know if you know spain if you know if you know civ then you know spain but there's a mod that lets spain start with a natural wonder it doesn't guarantee it but it allows you to have a have a natural wonder in your starting tile there's also a mod that gives you max natural wonders uh so so you do spain natural wonder start uh you have as many as many wonders as possible and as many natural wonders as possible 
it is and then you just see how much production you can make you just see you see what crazy things it's like solitaire you're not even if you put the game on the highest level you essentially just absolutely crush <laughs> the the ai there's no there's no competing with it but you can just you can kind of go infinite with it you can get to the point where you have so many aquifers going that that you um <laughs> You have so many aquifers going that your city just grows every turn until it gets so big that it can't support it. And then you start starving every turn until it goes down. And goes, That's, oh, it's so ridiculous. So much fun. Maybe we'll do a Civ stream sometime. How many hours is your average Civ game? I play it on the fastest. The fastest settings. Oh, Innkeeper's so good, but not on an empty. Oh, they have. Oh, we're, oh, we're dead. They have all the storm giants. Yeah. Oh. We need oh, double meatball. Double meatball. More powerful than Alderaan. What is the game that someone was recommending that was Civ like? I've never really played another Civ game. Oh, wow. Okay. There's got to be something we can do with this, right? Actually, I'm not even sure that there is. This deck is much less exciting when we're not doubling our adventures. One, two, three, four. Are we actually getting Pithing Needle to name the land? Oh, that's so depressing. That's so depressing. <laughs> yeah. But you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> All right, all the storm giants, fail witches, staying alive, staying alive. I mean, we could have got Field of Ruin, too, I guess. Oh, Nicobo. Okay, okay. Oh, no. How do they keep drawing so much action? Oh, no. Yeah, we're dead. All right. Well, we got crimmed. We got crimmed. Yeah, Field of Ruin maybe would have been a better choice there. I guess it... Well, hmm. Had we already played a land that turn? I guess that's the question. I do like that you don't have to sideboard with this deck. That's definitely the best part. Perfect for us, because we always forget to sideboard anyway. So <laughs> maybe this should be our primary stream deck. <laughs> Humankind. Humankind I've seen I've seen uh, some clips of. It looked interesting. Less city management, more army and people management. That sounds fun. I feel like normally I don't normally when I play Civ, I don't I'm not much of a warrior. For the most part, I I don't get into battles usually until the until the late game unless I have to. <laughs> I just want to make like the most super powered cities, <laughs> like try to build the wonders. Maybe we'll do a, a sim stream sometime. <sighs> I really still haven't gotten to Civ Six though. I need to. Everyone tells me that I I will like it eventually, but <sighs> whenever I fire it up, whenever I fire up Civ Six. I play a little bit of it, and I'm like, uh, like, I'm sure this is cool if I keep going and give it a bunch of hours, but I could just play Civ Five that I like right now. <laughs> I don't like this uh, it's so far, and I haven't played enough of it, but the the way you do your cities in Civ Six is just weird to me. Ooh, some, uh, some Salt Eye Fight Rigging action, eh? Ooh, fight rigging, fight rigging emergent ultimatums. I mean, that looks, that looks interesting. So you fight rigging emergent ultimatum. And then your piles, Dreadhorde, Vorinclax, Epiphany. I mean, that should, I mean, if there's one thing I know about Salt Eye Ultimatum or emergent ultimatum is you usually just scoop when it hits the stack <laughs> because there's no way you're, there's no way you're coming back from it. Jetmere's going to go. Opponent. I like Civ 5 better than 6. I don't know if... I don't know if I'm just uh, in the minority, but personally, I'm a Civ 5 fan. I think the biggest difference is the way you manage your cities. There's a... Ooh, okay. Well, uh, in that case, we're just going to... We're just gonna draw a couple cards. Why we got these innkeepers? Draw a card, draw a card. Hit you with the innkeepers. I feel a meatball massacre coming on any moment. 
to get rid of these innkeepers. You know it's gonna happen. Uh, wow, no, maybe it's not gonna happen. Uh, well, play a land. Lucky Clover. Lucky Clover. Hit you with the Love Struck Beast. Oh, our adventures are gonna be super. This is Max L draining. This is Max L draining. Yeah, Ultimatum Standard was not fun after a while. Oh goodness. That was that was during the Broken Era. That was during the Broken Era. I don't know why they didn't ban those cards sooner. I mean, I guess they never... They didn't ever ban anything out of Celtic Ultimatum, did they? I don't know why they didn't ban cards more. Maybe that's what I'm trying to say. They already banned a lot, but... Even that was probably not enough. About it. Looking at our Lucky Clovers. And... Oh, I mean, I guess Earl got banned out of everything. Um, well, play a land. Do some ramping. Get a planes. <sighs> okay, gonna spend the negate. Sure. That is annoying. Opponent goes to seven. Untaps. Flips are fable the mirror breaker. Someone, someone asked this. I'm curious what your thoughts are if you're a modern player. Someone asked this on the podcast this week. Now that we have better interaction in modern, like unholy heat in prismatic ending, should should Uro or should Oko get another chance? Should Oko get another chance because of those cards? Uh, well, go to combat. Attack, yeah. Hero's downfall, okay. Well, escape to the wilds. Heart's Desire. Oh, now I'm bad at this. Yeah, we could have done a lot more. I forgot we had an extra land drop. So we could have played the we could have played the footsteps first. Ay, little punt, little punt. Oh, I do miss Simeon Spirit Guide. Simeon Spirit Guide, I also lean towards no. Simeon Spirit Guide, though, it got banned for the sins of of like Cascade. <laughs> I just want to cast Blood Moon with it. I was I played it fairly. I was the fairest Simeon Spear Guide player, and it was sad to see it. It was sad to see it uh get wrecked as a result. Oh. Hmm. Huh. I mean, I guess we just got the Fable Passage at this point. I think? I think we'd rather have the escape. About it. Gonna make some treasures. I mean, I guess I could still have counters. Oh. Oh my goodness. Wow. That is insanely brutal. Well, Omnath. Draw a card. Forest. Love struck. Oh, we don't even have blue mana. This mana base. Love struck beast. Hit ya. Oh, okay. About it. Flips it again. We really need to kill this person. Okay, kill it. I will never give credit to a Grixis Crim deck. Never, never, never. Hmm. Strangle's not great. Uh, go to combat. Hit ya. Down to three. Pass the turn. Wait, what is the what is the punt? Seriously. Seriously. <sighs> Suffer for 
Wait, I'm so confused what we're getting punted. What we're getting punted for. Upload it. Oh, wait. Could we have... Oh, yeah. Okay. That that would be a brain fog. It's brain fog. That would actually be a pun. I, I was thinking that our beanstalk had already been used, but that was one that was exiled from uh, Escape to the Wilds. Well, it's a, a lot of brazen borrowers that are doing nothing. Okay, opponent. <laughs> always, always, a, always another piece of action off the top of the deck. That is for sure. Oh, okay, bounce the Nagobo loss. Bone passes. Lucky Clover. Pass the turn. Can we draw a good card, please? Punt again. I'm. S <laughs> oh, I think that cycling is more important than playing a double blue source. The brazen borrowers are not are not going to be very good here. All right, Nicole Bolas. They're okay as bounce spells, but. I don't I think we need more action more than we need more than we need a uh, more than we need another blue source. Hey, what's up, Zove? How are you? But we should have cast a beanstalk giant. That I agree with. Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah, that is literally game, right? <laughs> Jeez, oh my action. All right. All right, all right, all right. Uh, still waiting for Richard to respond to me. Do you know how long it usually takes to get to things like that? Um, it could it could take a minute. It could take a minute. All right, that one doesn't count. That one doesn't count. Crim crim matches never count. Um, what's up with magic players <laughs> saying punts for mistakes? Punts are intentional in football, more like a fumble. I think. Does anyone actually know the origin of punt in magic? Nesmith, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, Pony has a lot of just like busted. Uh, not busted. I, don't, I say busted a lot. When I say busted, that doesn't mean like you should ban it or something. But they have a lot of strong cards in their deck, and they they drew many of them. That's uh, that's gonna happen. I mean, yeah, uh, punt punt the game away. That makes sense. But I'm wondering what the I'm gonna have to research it. I honestly don't know the origins of pun. I want to say that it. I don't know if that's actually a football thing, because you're right that a punt in football, a uh, punt, a punt in football, a punt in football is intentional. Like it's not a positive because you're giving the ball up and you don't want to be doing that, but it's it's something you do on purpose. It's not a mistake. When in magic, punts are, are misplays, uh, mistakes that you don't make on purpose. I wonder if it comes from, I wonder if it comes from poker. That's my guess. A lot of magic, a lot of magic slang comes from poker. Nut draw. We did, we did a short on that one. Nut draw comes from poker. I don't know if the origins, the origin story is really interesting. Although I don't know, it might be, it might be folklore. But the, the wagon wheel thing, they say that that's the, the origins of it. Whether or not that actually is, who knows for sure. Hmm. Double stomp would be pretty sweet. Uh, or we just strangle. All right, let's do it this way. Let's strangle the brawler. Play the tap land. Next turn, we can Lucky Clover double Lovestruck Beast. The following turn, hopefully we find a land and we can Lucky Clover triple, triple stomp? <laughs> a fumble would make more sense from a football perspective, right? Ah, Burning Tree. I have a love-hate relationship with Burning Tree. Although I'll say Burning Tree is fine in Pioneer Explorer. There was a time when I really disliked the Burning Tree deck in, in uh, Historic. There was a time when it was pretty busted. Uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch Town Infamous, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. They get. Thank ya. All right, Lucky Clover. Double Hearts Desire. 
Well, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. If we get Ember Cleaved here, we're very sad. That would be a blowout. That's so much damage. So much damage. Punt giving it away. That that makes sense. Tilted is definitely a poker term. I don't know the I don't know how I got into poker, but really? Tilt comes from pinball first? I mean I guess that does make sense. I I know about it as a poker term. Ugh, questing beast. I actually don't know if this is gonna be enough. Is this Bone Crusher even gonna be enough? So Lucky Clover, Untap Land. Huh. Yeah, I mean, we can't kill it all. I think this is one of those play draw games where if we were, if we had played first, I think we'd stabilize. But since our opponent got to play first, I don't know if we're going to be able to. Yeah. Oh, we picked the wrong one, I guess. I've been thinking about why modern hasn't felt the same to me. I think it's all the hyper staples. In the past, there was a few Pathbolt Thoughtseize, a few others, but all the new cards, uh, like Monkey, Elementals, Run and Six, make me feel like decks not playing those cards have a leg down. Sorta also agree with Richard in the last cast. Yeah, yeah, so I think part of the difference, and let me know if you think this is true. I'm curious, because I've noticed myself feeling this way. Winner Malant, I'm doing much better. Not 100% yet, but I'm a lot better than I was. So thank you, Winner Malant. Welcome back to the visual things you have Do you think it matters that those cards are printed to be modern staples? I've noticed for me, uh, if I'm playing a game of Commander, let's say, and you force of will me, fair game. But if you hit me with oh, whatever, I can't think of the name of it right now. The the one that's free if you have a your commander. Uh, fierce fierce uh, guardianship. If you hit me with fierce guardianship. It feels worse to me because I think, wow, like this card was designed specifically to do this in that format. For some reason, if it's printed naturally through standard, like, I don't know, I'm more okay with it. That's part of the reason why, even though I think Soul Ring should be banned, it, in some ways, even though I think the impact it has on the game is a huge negative, in some ways... I can be more accepting of that than something like Dockside or Jeweled Lotus. Because Jeweled Lotus was printed to be busted in Commander. Like, that's the goal. They wanted to sell packs to Commander, so they made this card specifically to be busted in Commander. Soul Ring, it was printed 30 years ago. They had no idea what they were doing. They actually just thought it was a legitimately, like, good card to print for the game of Magic. And I can forgive that. Like, it, sure, it didn't work out 30 years later when we created this new format that they had no idea would be a thing when they made it 30 years ago. Like, how are you going to blame anyone for that? So, I don't know. For some reason, those cards... And the modern is a little bit the same. When I see a Raghavan, it's a little bit like... Uh, I don't know. Like, you you wanted this to be happening. This was intentional. You wanted this to be happening. And I don't feel that way when it's a Goblin Guide or a Monastery Swift Spear or, or whatever. Like, uh, those cards just happen. You thought they were going to be good in standard. Or you wanted to whatever, support a theme and, you know, a standard set 10 years ago. And they end up being good in modern. That's kind of fair game. But it's a little different when it's like, oh, we want this card to be... We made this card to be busted in the format. Garth is basically a conjure card. It's it's about as close to conjuring as, as you can get in paper, right? Like, it's kind of even an argument to perhaps for conjure being ugh, a paper paper playable mechanic um hmm yeah let's just do this now we're just gonna we're just gonna put an end to this no shenanigans allowed so i'm curious if other people think of that feel that way or not like does the fact a card was printed specifically to be good in a format make it feel worse than cards that just naturally ended up being good in a format Hmm. <sighs> now what? Now what? But it's got three cards. I mean, I guess we can just play... Let's just play Bone Crusher. I don't know. That's an easy choice. I don't know what we're supposed to do. Muxus. Well, Muxus... <sighs> 
I don't know what they were making Muxes for, honestly. Muxes, it was designed for a paper. It was designed for Jumpstart. And I just, I don't know. I guess it was just designed to make Jumpstart good. Which is probably fine. Oh, Gates and Modern. I really wish the Baldur's Gate. I really wish the Baldur's Gate Gates were legal and modern. I think that would be very interesting. Um, well, Kill Pelt Collector. Play a land. Footsteps. Hopefully nothing horrible happens this turn. Uh, get an island. Uh, so next turn we can double bone crusher, then we can beanstalk. <laughs> I love, I love, I love gates. What can I say? I just, I love the gate deck. Uh, well, fabled passage, correct. Hopefully we have a mountain. I didn't actually look to see if we had enough lands. There's got to be another mountain, right? Okay, well, one more. That was close. Uh, stomp. Stomp the Llanowar Elves. Bone Crusher Giant. Go. Oh, the gates would be so fun in modern. That might mean we have to play Historic. Historic is a format, another format that I haven't really played since Alchemy came out. But if they release the gates on Arena in the, I don't even know, Commander Legends, Adventures in Forgotten Round, Battle for Buttergate, Dungeons and Dragons, Alchemy, Webmasters, I, I don't even know. Something something like that. Some, some combination of those words. If they release the gates in that set, though, we might have to play some Historic with the new, the new gates. Because the new gates are sweet. Oh, they're so sweet. That might make me play Historic again, just so I can, just so I can play that deck in specific. Have you ever wondered why back in the day, Wizards never printed a one mana rock that tapped for one? They made zero mana value, two mana value, zero taps for two, one taps for two, two taps for two, three taps for two, but never one for one, so strange. Ooh, uh, what a... Are you tired of this deck already, Daniel? I think the... I think the next deck, as far as what people uh, voted for, is is the Nullhide Ferox Fight Rigging deck, if we're, if we're bored of adventuring. Opponent. Uh, Takes it. I don't even think we play the innkeeper. I think we just wait. Opponent. Uh, Land or Elves. Ooh, all right, now we will. Okay, so. Stomp your Llanowar. Innkeeper. Oh, I miss the streams too, Starfish. Yeah, the the double the double whammy of having uh having an event having spoiler season into Command Fest Richmond into COVID. Uh, missed a lot of streams lately, but hopefully we're back on track now. I think we're back on track. Don't have any events. Should be normal for the for the time being. Not doing. No, I started at two, which is is the normal time. What's up, Alex? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh. Oh wait, what they? Oh, Tamio safekeeping. All right, that's that's pretty good. Pretty good. Best turn. Uh, would you mind if I sent you a deck list? I, uh, you mentioned wanting to see some divine intervention decks during, oh boy, I wish we had, I wish we had an adventure card. Look at all this card draw if we only had an adventure. Opponent blocks. If you got an opponent, call, oh my god. Who plays Tabio Safekeeping in this day and age? <laughs> I mean, I guess it's actually good. I'm surprised people play it though over like Snakeskin Veil or whatever. Can we draw an adventure guard, please? Maybe. Cycle. Okay, that that works. Edgewall Innkeeper, Love Struck Beast. Ah! Elder Raid. Draw three. Oh, there's a Fae of Wishes too. Um, I am worried about dying. 
Death is a concern. I'll play the Steam Vents. I mean, if we untap, we're so... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if we attack with this, opponent blocks here, then they kill this, and then they... There's no way. We're going to attack. We're going to get in there. We're going to get in there. We're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Oh, my God. We killed... We killed a Casting Bees. It took... <laughs> It took 40 turns, but we did it. We did it, Reddit. Um, do you think that Wizards will for unbanned cards in Commander? So, Commander's weird in that Wizards doesn't actually control the ban list. But I think that cards... Cards have been unbanned before. It has happened. So I do think that it will happen again. Uh, I'd love to see your deck, by the way. Epic uh, intent. Sorry, I got distracted. I got distracted. But yes, I'd love to see it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Blue, blue. Uh, you know what? How about how about a little uh, a little rebuke? <laughs> I think that'll uh, that'll do that'll do, pig. Found it. Down to two. Ah, Nasif's Boros fires deck. Nasif does play some sweet decks. Nasif might be my favorite, my favorite current streamer. I don't get a chance to watch as many streams. One of the odd parts about making content is you don't get to watch as much content, but I do, I do enjoy Nasif streams. I always have fun when I get to watch Nasif stream. Boros Fires. That looks, uh, that looks sweet. Is Fires, how do you feel about... How do you feel about uh how do you feel about fires now? Is fires a card that is that's cool again? Yeah, you know, I never know with those cards. When it's a card that was like really hated in standard, is there an amount of time that passes or an amount of formats that you go back where it becomes cool again or is it just always is it always a, a miserable card? Like is fires do you want to see fires decks again? Hey, what's up, Winzo? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Um but is fire something you want to see again, or is it, or is it still like is it something you're sick of because of how it dominated in standard in other places? Yeah, fires isn't actually very good in explorer. <laughs> I don't think we've seen any like top tier, top tier decks. We have a new donation from Corpsey Cola. Uh, hey Seth, been me asked this for a while. If you could have a promotional reprint of any card that would feature your likeness. What would it be and why? Oh, so, I mean, I think the answer is it, it already happened. I don't forget a promo yet, but Hans Ericsson, obviously, uh, they already they already put my likeness on a card, apparently. Um, so that's the that's the easy that's the easy answer. What would the what would the uneasy answer be? Hmm. Ah. Oh. I don't know if you saw, did you see the, there was a video that Paulo did, uh, PVDDR, did with, with someone who makes, uh, Hearthstone content, and it was, like, Magic player trying to guess if Hearthstone cards were good, and then vice versa, and they did the, they did the Magic one, and <laughs> they did the Magic one, and Paulo, Paulo had to choose the cards, so Paulo's going through, like, Lanamore Elves. Like, is it good? And going through all these cards. And he gets to the last one, and it's uh, <laughs> it's his own card with his face on it. And the kid, <laughs> the kid he was doing the video with didn't realize it at first until Paulo pointed it out. And he was like, I'm, I was a little disappointed that you didn't notice. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it would be so sweet to have your face on a card, though. Like, oh, my God, it would be so sweet. The question is, what card? And that that's not easy. Other than Hans... I mean, what about the Blood Moon? Blood Moon, if you've ever looked closely at the Blood Moon art, there's kind of a face on the moon a little bit. Uh, especially, let's see. See, there's kind of there's kind of a face in the moon. Like, what if what if that was my face? And then, could Blood Moon have a beard? Would that be possible? So you have the, the kind of the, the face in the moon, a little bit of, like a, a shadowy beard. That might be the best one. <laughs> Okay, opponent's gonna ramp us a bit. Thank you. 
Although, honestly, we would have... We probably would have rather had... The ability to, uh... Double up our... Adventures. Well, kill that. Play a land. Pass the turn. We need an escape. Ooh, Magus of the Moon. Magus of the Moon could be good. Odd object. I don't know why it'd be on Paramonicon either. That's the that's the other issue. Odd object. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Beard, bearded Yarok. Did we just draw another land? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of lands. That's a lot of lands. About it. Undaps. Questing Beast. This probably means I got that silly Tamiyo's safekeeping card again. They've gotten good use out of those safekeepings. Come on, deck. We need a real card here. Oh, come on. Oh, the flood is super real at the moment. Oh, we're going to lose to this flood. Yarok. Let me, let me look at the Yarok art. Could we make it work? Could we make it work? <laughs> okay. I could see that. I can see that. Yarok with a beard. What is... <laughs> I've never really wondered about this before, but what is Yarok doing? Wait, th this is the face, right? Is this Yarok's face? This is Yarok. This has got to be the face. The glowing green face. Or is this the face? Is this Yarok's mouth? Wait, is this part of Yarok? Oh, I thought this was like a stick he was chasing. He was like playing fetch, but that's... I. The more I look at this, the less I know <laughs> about what Yarok is, uh, is actually up to. <laughs> oh, that's the stomach. Okay. Okay, okay. We'll take Brawler. If we don't draw something good, I think we're just going to probably die here. Opponent. How does Yarok's art suggest that it is a panharmonicon effect, though? How does it suggest trigger doubling? I don't really see it. I don't really. I don't really see anything. Uh, Love struck beast. I mean, I guess that makes a blocker. I don't know if it's enough. Love struck beast. Play the tap land. Hit you with a flyer. But I don't like where we're at. It's me, it's me glowing in the belly. Maybe that's the way to do it. Maybe I, I'm just, I'm just in Yarok's belly <laughs> being, uh, being digested. <laughs> He's scuttling. Yeah, kind of like Zoidberg, right? Uh, scuttling. Well, we will block. <laughs> Tell me you don't have another Tamiyo safekeeping. Gee, well, I didn't have a Tamiyo safekeeping. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we're, we're super dead now. Are we literally dead now? Emberglebe's a messed up card. We're playing an Eldorain tribal deck and we still lose to Eldorain. Epic. Okay, so maybe Adventures is just bad in this format. Epic. Epic sent in. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What's your opinion about this pile? The player name Foreign Magra. I finished three and two in a league with the pile. Let me see. Let me see. No, 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 no. Uh, wait, what was the name? Oh, four in Magra. <laughs> I saw this deck. I actually, I actually briefly considered trying to play this deck in Historic, but I realized, I realized the pieces didn't exist. The idea intrigues me. I like how budget friendly the mana base is. Playing all the new fetch lands. Um, the rest of the deck I'm not sure on. Like, I could see how Omnath into, into Niv or like a, a Tibble can win the game. Omnath with Fetchlands is really powerful. You got Bring the Light to hold it all together. But the deck looks a little airy to me. I don't know. I'm used to seeing Niv decks that have a, more cards to them. More like one ofs and so forth. So, uh, Courier's Briefcase isn't even a multicolor card, so the idea is neat, but it's also just, like, weird. 
Oh, let me let me see. Ep uh, epic. All right. Ooh, Zadra is a fun commander. <laughs> Divine intervention is just such a funny way to not win a game. <laughs> I, I like the idea of using Zedru to donate it, and then you can blame it on whoever you donated it to. I, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't draw the game. That, that's on you. No, it looks. Uh, that looks sweet. It lo also, fractured identity. I mean, fractured identity works with Zedru shenanigans and with nine lives. But the idea of giving everyone a divine intervention is also kind of funny. Uh, I like it. I like it. This deck in question for uniqueness scale. Ooh. Um, well, play a land. Ship the turn. We got bone crushers for days. Nothing fun to do with them, though. Ingus combo with ooh, devilish valet. That looks that looks sweet. Oh. Could you imagine if Ingus Oh my god. It's elemental? I never realized that Gurning Ingus was elemental. I was going to say, could you imagine if it triggered Risen Reef? It does trigger Risen Reef. Okay, that makes me like this deck like 10 times more. Because that that is... Why have I never seen anyone do that before? <laughs> that's actually that's actually awesome. I didn't realize that Gurning Ingus was elemental. Oh, oh. Why have I not been playing that already? That's so that's so obvious. Why why is no one doing this? I mean, I guess the colors are a little bit awkward, but still, could you imagine if we had Risen Reef in the deck we were playing earlier? We would draw so many cards. <laughs> so many cards. I mean, it doesn't go infinite by itself, but if you can add one more piece like a Burgie and have the Risen Reef out, then you then you draw your deck. Oh my god. Okay, that's that's sweet. I don't know if it's good. It's probably not good, but um <laughs> But it does look spectacular. I love it. We don't have green mana? That's awkward. Well, I guess we keep stomping. Uh yeah, how do we not have green mana in this deck? That's the that's the easy part. Abodent. Oh, I I didn't, John. All right, I gotta look up. I gotta look up John now. Oh, there's our blue man, or there's our green mana. All right, so Fabled Passage. I think our opponent's gonna be a little bit disappointed in the amount of stomping uh, they're getting at the moment. Beanstalk Giant, Footsteps. Actually, let's manually, manually tap Beanstalk Giant, Feral Footsteps. Grab a forest, I think. Go attacking. Hmm. They have to gain so much life. Uh, we're gonna play it. We're gonna play it safe. We're gonna play it safe. Wait, so if you you draw the game, if you donate an island home creature. At the beginning of your end step, target opponent gains control of up to one target creature you control, but two plus one plus one counters and tap it. It's going for the rest of the game. This creature can't be... <laughs> this creature can't be sacrificed. Island home is... Is when... <laughs> is when you don't have an island, you have to sacrifice it. <laughs> oh, so if you donate it to... So if you donate it to someone who doesn't have who doesn't have an island, it just it just keeps trying to sacrifice forever until it draws the game. <laughs> oh, that's that is ridiculous and I love it. Um well We gotta stomp the speaker of the heavens. Ooh. Okay, okay. Things are getting interesting. 
Lucky Clover. Ooh, double granted. Get what? We need to not die. That's number one. Okay. Not die and then do something. Oh, we can't cast body though, right? Body fed would be great, but the mana, our mana is so far off. I don't think we can go that direction yet. I think we got to wait until we get better mana. The triple green, triple blue is actually a, a challenge. We might have to just take River's Rebuke for now. Maybe like Escape to the Wilds, River's Rebuke. Or River's Rebuke once in the future. Hmm. So many choices. The Ugin would be great eventually. Well, River's Rebuke for sure. And you know what? We're going to be dirty, dirty, dirty Ugin players. We're going to be taking a smacking here, though, which is scary. We do have our Lucky Clover going. We don't have anything good to go with it. Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, no. Coco number two, Righteous Valkyrie number three. God. You gotta be kidding me. Seriously? Just the greatest, the greatest Coco. Oh, and they say good game? Oh! <laughs> All right. Well, I guess that was a good game for our opponent. <laughs> Those were the best Cocos I've seen in a long time. Jeez. <laughs> that was just, that was, uh, that was very, that was, uh, that was very impressive Coco hits for sure. Wow. It's hard to get Graph Diggers after your opponent's already Cocoed. Like, if you can get it before they Coco'd once, maybe. We're also, like, so far behind on board. Like, it is good at shutting down Coco, but after they already double Righteous Valkyrie, yeah. But after they already hit double Righteous Valkyrie off the first Coco, then I think it's it's too late. <laughs> Imagine Coco was designed to be casual for fun card. Yeah, Coco's a card that Wizards actually came out in and uh, said that it... If they were banning cards the way they ban cards now, it would have been banned in standard. Or likely been banned in standard. Something something like that. Something don't, don't quote me on the exact words, but something something to that effect that if they were banning cards the way they did now, it would it would be banned. Or would have been. That's how that's how strong it is. It is a very strong card. I like Coco though. It was pretty degenerate in standard, but I think in older formats it's it doesn't even see that much play in modern anymore. <laughs> like it's kind of I mean, maybe that's a testament to modern having having its own set of issues, but uh, well, play an innkeeper. Ugh. Huh. Bishop of Wings is super obnoxious. Uh, Bone Crusher draw a card. Pass the turn. About it untaps. Realm Walker, okay. We'd like to be hitting lands. We haven't done a good job with that. Well, that is technically, technically that is a land. Get in with a bone crusher. And pass the turd. Yeah, Coco, Coco could have been downgraded in MH2, I think. Okay, opponent, of course, has a collected company. Well, we're going to bounce the... I think we bounce the bishop for now. They can't always be as good as that last one. They can't. There's no way that it's double Righteous Valkyrie. Not possible. You can't just always hit two Righteous Valkyries. It, there's no... Oh. Oh, only a Righteous Valkyrie in the Skyclave. I see. I see, I see, I see, yeah, 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 fair. <laughs> fair and balance magic. Bone it. 
Well, the Cocos are still still doing it for our opponent. Gets in, hits us. I don't know how they keep managing to do it, but they do somehow. Get in and hit you. Well, we will do some ramping. Well, I guess we have to take an island the way they tapped us. Pass the turn up out of depths. <laughs> yeah, it would be pretty good in Artisan. What's the best card in Artisan, Rugger? Bishop of Wings returns. <sighs> okay. Another Bishop of Wings. Well, I don't know if we're winning this battle. This Bone Crusher is not dealing enough damage to fight through just the amount of life our opponent's gaining. Opponent attacks with Bone. Coco's just beating us. It's just beating us. Another Brazen Borrower. Well, escape to the wilds. Oh, two forests. Two forests are not going to help. Not going to help. I'll hit ya. Yeah, I think this is where we die, though. We needed it, Blue Man, to leave up the Brazen Borrower. Not going to do it about it. <sighs> They're just gonna gain too much life. They're gonna gain too much life. Yeah, Mono Red's never beating this deck. Dagani for the second month. Valkyrie returns. They got another one, don't they? You know they do. Our opponents just respond to Angel off the... Oh, no! Oh my god. Obnoxious. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Nagati for the second month. Uh, love the content. Super sad that he could be rich Richmond, but I want to let you know that you're a big reason I still play Magic today. Hopefully I'll get another chance. Keep up the great work. Wait, were you were you in Richmond, Dakani? Is that possible? Well, I'm sorry I couldn't uh didn't meet you either if you were there. Uh maybe maybe Vegas. I might I might go to Vegas. Alright, I'm let's let's try the null hide uh, the the null hide deck. We can get in a couple null hide games. Uh I don't think we can stream Civ today, but the response was actually pretty positive, so Maybe, maybe we will do some streaming of Civ in the future at some point. So this deck, the fight rigging deck, I mostly think it's interesting because of its finishers. Uh, this is, so you got Null Hide, you got the fight rigging, you're trying to put big stuff into play with it. The part that is interesting is the top end is Noxious Gear Hulk, Massacre Worm, and Dreadfast Demon. So you can play the Mana Dorks early to ramp into the fight rigging. I guess you could also ramp into the finishers, but then you can sack the mana dorks to dread fast demon. It's a, it's an interesting suite. Normally this isn't what you're seeing on the top end of a null high deck. So that's the part that's I think most, most interesting. Uh, oh no, Kuezo Wax. <laughs> I apologize for butchering your name for the 27. I probably butchered it 27 months in a row actually. For the 27th month, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip for you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank ya. Esper Dragons. Ooh. We need we need these dragons on Arena. We need them for Explore. I mean, they're not top tier cards, but they're cards that they'd be fun to mess around with. Like, ah, uh, Slumgar, Ojitai, both Slumgars actually. They are sweet cards. Yeah, we're missing like all those on Arena. Oh, well, here's to here's to 27 more months of butchering. Do I like beer? I'm not a big I'm not a big drinker, honestly. What a So considering that I'm not a not a big beer drinker. What uh what would you what would you recommend? Are you a are you a beer drinker? You're a drunk daddy? <laughs> I guess your name suggests that it's it's possible. Oh, Crazy Alex. Oh, uh, Crazy Alex. I I got you. I got that makes that makes way more sense. That makes oh. Could you imagine if they thought Seized our Null Hide? 
That could have happened by accident. No one knows no hide. I don't think it's impossible. <laughs> I don't think it's impossible that someone would thaw sees it without reading it all the way. Uh, well, land on red, and we got all the expensive stuff. That's for sure. Paradise Druid. Are they really going to start adding Pioneer cards, or are we getting scammed again? It's a good question. That is a very good question. Fight rigging. Oh, all right. We'll do it the dirty way. <laughs> so Nullhide's actually great here because it's gonna be pretty much impossible for our opponent to kill. We get the we get a dirty tibble, unfortunately, but we will we will accept it. Opponent <laughs> takes up hits a land. Sure, sure, sure. Down to sixteen. Well, we're gonna play Nullhide Ferox. We're gonna go to combat. We're gonna put a counter on the Nullhide Ferox. Oh no! Oh! Who built this deck? It doesn't work! Oh no! It's a. Oh, the non bows! It's cast. Oh no! Oh, that's the biggest non bow I've ever seen. <laughs> Velky does not seem good in this deck. Okay, well, uh. <laughs> Boom, you got a creature? You got a creature in there? No. Okay, you're go. Oh, the whole combo fizzles. <laughs> okay, so so I think the, the problem is Null Eyed Ferox says you can't cast non-creature spells. Uh, anyone can pay two to get rid of, uh, to get rid of its abilities. Um, so you can't cast non creature spells. So we no hide it to have a big enough creature to turn on the fight rigging to try to cast the Tybalt, but Tybalt is a <laughs> the backside is a non creature spell. So we could not actually cast it. Oh, this is gonna go so poorly now. Opponent. Oh, I thought they were gonna kill the null hide Ferox. Okay. They're not. They they like the non bows. Well, now we get to kill their Chandra, at least. Opponent. Uh, is Arena? Yes, we are. We're, uh, we're arena at the moment. But we're going to kill this Chandra for sure. Hit it. Oh, that was so brutal. <laughs> that was so brutal. <laughs> All right, Paradise Druid. Oh, you're right. Ha, Heartless Act. Heartless Act? Who plays Heartless Act? <laughs> yeah, that that is, this is a little too big braid. I think maybe we just don't want to play the oh, opponents in for a surprise here. Opponents missing it too. Are you gonna remove the counters? Are you gonna remove the counters? They're gonna remove the counters. <laughs> shrink it, shrink it. <laughs> Cancel luck. <laughs> oh, there's oh another. How do we keep drawing these Valkies? How is that even possible? No, we're gonna we're gonna stay to the plan. We're gonna hit you with everything. We're gonna run out a creature Valky since Tibalt's offline. <laughs> Hey, what's up, dude, bro, man, guy? How are you? Take a peek. Opponent. it. No, he's going to win us this game through the non-bows. Our opponent just can't kill it. They can't kill it. And they scoop it up. Maybe no hides. Maybe no hides uh, good anyway. Maybe it's just so good that it overcomes the... <laughs> it overcomes all the non-bows. Ah! The shame scoop. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone had reason to be ashamed in that matchup, it was probably us. I think we got to oh cut God. these Velk. Well, you know what? You know what? Let's try it again. Maybe it doesn't come up that often. Maybe it was just unfortunate how that game played out. Maybe it doesn't actually come up that often. <laughs> no, I still got there. Nalakilla, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Is a... Uh... <clears throat> I was thinking about this recently with our with our big creatures in this deck. Is Omnixilus overrated? Did, we, did I overrate? Did everyone overrate that card? Everyone had that card rated highly. I kind of feel like Omnixilus, Mob Nixilus. I kind of feel like it's overrated. I feel like 
people thought it was going to show up in a lot of different decks. But it really, to me, it's only really been good in very specific archetypes. You got to be like super aggro or maybe a sacrifice deck. I feel like, I feel like everyone focused on, oh my God, this is a three mana planeswalker. Uh, actually, oh my God, this is two three mana planeswalkers and not, oh my God, this is a punisher card. <laughs> I think everyone just overlooked and everyone's like, Oh, two three mana planeswalkers. This has to be busted. But then, while well, they milled double null hide, what are the chances? But then, when they actually, when it actually came time to play, uh, to play the card, it's a, it's still a Punisher card. It still is. Oh, kill the goose, kill the goose. Rogues, 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 rogues. About it. I think like sacrifice decks, it can be good. In in uh in very aggro decks, I still think it's good in the like the mono black aggro deck we played in Explore. I found it to be very good there. Um but I don't think it's just good in uh, in many archetypes. I see people just jam into decks and ah uh, it's always disappoints me when I play in a random deck. Yeah, I mean we can't LOL too much because we're losing to Explorer Rogues. <laughs> Rogues is just such an annoying deck to play against. Ugh. This one, it's it hasn't been out of standard long enough. People still, like, uh, Rose just never leaves. Like, some of them rotate, but the rest of them are still around, and people don't play them, and ugh. It's, uh, it's still, I just, I, I hate playing against this deck. So this was a deck that, this was a deck that was played in Pi Real Pioneer. Uh, Real Pioneer, I think it was on... Oh, what's the... Let me see the deck list. It might have the name on it. It should have. L uh, actually, I, I, I don't know. Lucas... Lucas Giggs? Lucas Giggs is the, is the name on it. I believe, though, that it was... Yeah, Discard's another archetype where it can be good. I believe that it was um, a deck from actual Pioneer, and I made a couple of... Oh, God. All right. Fair enough. Um, I believe it was a deck that was played in actual Pioneer, and then I made a couple of changes to... <laughs> We're going to get a, gonna get Shifty here, and a, <laughs> a Rasta -y and Free Booty, uh, all, all those things. Um... I believe it was a deck that was played in actual Pioneer, and then I had to make like a substitute or two to like make it work in in Explorer. But it is otherwise it's it's very much the same the same list. Huh. So it's not it's not really my fault, but I also did not catch it when I was updating the deck. So maybe it's partly my fault. Rogues, rogues, rogues. The joy of rogues. Um, huh. Yeah, maybe something like that. <laughs> a little, a little kite sail, <laughs> kite sail freebootery. Uh, all right. Well, we got to fight rigging. We'll see if it survives the thought seizing. It could be good, uh, opponent. Well, all right, all right, all right. Uh, kite sail freebooter, a little free booty. <laughs> take a take a peek. <laughs> it does. It does sound like that poster, doesn't it? <laughs> what do you got about it? What do you got? <laughs> a handful of good cards. Um, well, I think we take the... Uh, so they play this. They mill cards. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess we got to take the Fatal Push for now. Opponent runs out. Thieves Guild Enforcer. 
Ronald Grinder, welcome to the fishbowl. Yeah, we pretty much have to. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, go to combat attack. This isn't gonna work because they can ether gust it, and then they can flash in this rogue to mill it. And then I guess we're just out of luck. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent gets in, does more milling. Super obnoxious. We draw a card we can't cast. Play a gilded use. Pass the turd. Ooh, and we're missing land drops. Really? Do you play against a lot of agent decks? Interesting. I don't play against Agent of Treachery that much. Ronald Grinder, welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super chat for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Opponent gets in for a million. Down to 13. Now we draw land. Shifting Ceratops. Oh, come. <laughs> oh, come on. All right, I don't want to play rogues anymore next. <sighs> what? <coughs> Excuse me. That's a good reminder why rogues is so obnoxious. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What is... Question for you, chat. What is just your personal least favorite archetype to play against? What is, what is your just personal number one? I feel like decks like rogues, a lot of those, I feel like a lot of those decks are mostly annoying when you're trying to do janky fun things. If you're playing another similar deck, then it's fine. But when you're trying to do like some janky, janky whatever thing, you, you just get so stomped. I'm so, wow, a lot of people don't like mill. Really? Why, why mill? I'm actually curious. Blue white control, that makes sense. I seen people say control. That one that one makes a lot of sense to me. Control uh, flash style decks, those are yeah, tempo flash, like mono green, what those style of decks. Those are also like incredibly annoying. So I can see that. Mill. Mill is not one that really crossed my mind. Is being a is being a something that would tilt people. What is the tilting part of mill? Is it the, like, you mill the cards I want to draw thing? Because mill hasn't really been overpowered in any format, right? Not recently, at least. We're going to the goose. Oh, boy. We are, we are getting set up to get meatballed here. Gill the goose. Gill the goose. Opponent. Land. And... Well, they took the Valky, so we're not going to deal with that, at least. Turbo, Turbo Fog is so annoying. <laughs> Turbo Fog is, like, always bad. Usually bad. But it is, like, an intentionally, uh, intentionally annoying archetype. Well, get down the fight, Riggin. If we can get empty-handed... All right, kills a, kills a goose. Sad honk. Uh, well, Noxious Gear Hulk? I guess Noxious Gear Hulk's better. <laughs> send the send the message. Turbo Fog, Turbo Fog, yeah, it is funny. Oh, no, is this, oh, Xander? Uh, we will discard this Nullhide Ferox, round it down. Thank you, friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh yes, I think we will. We will do that. We will sack one. <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> and they skipped it. 
<laughs> that was like the biggest backfire. <laughs> that was so good. Phone had the turn three. The turn three Soren Xander is that oh I kinda love Nullhide Ferox. I wonder with all the thought seizes, are there any more of these cards that are on arena? Orvar kind of does. Nullhide Ferox. There's no Loxodon Smiter. Is there anything else that goes into play? Is there anything else that goes into play when uh when you discard it. Could we build a deck that was just all those cards? <laughs> that would actually be pretty funny. <laughs> There's a bunch more in... Yeah, Orvar does. Tamio prevents discard. There's a bunch more in modern. I guess we could try to do it in modern, but... No, we got the, we got the Null Hide, so we're set if they Xander us. We come prepared. What our opponent needs to do is just Thought Seize the Null Hide... Before the the Xander comes down, obviously, and then uh, and then they can avoid all these hassles. <laughs> Bailoth, yes, yes. Obstinate Bailoth is like the classic. Would Johnny slash in? I forgot all about that card, but you're right. That would work. Now untap land. Ugh. You know what? I think we're just gonna Valky here. I think this is safest to try to make sure we don't get got. Whoa! No. What is that? Hand? Okay, sure. Land. <laughs> yes! <laughs> this is the best day ever! Um. <laughs> Life is so good! Life is so good! <laughs> Oh. Well, I think we got to attack with it, unfortunately. <laughs> I, what did they think was going to happen? All right, opponent blocks. <laughs> we'll get down to fight rigging. <laughs> I don't know what they expected. Boy, these have been some... These fight rankings have not been great, I will say. The fight rankings themselves have not been great. They brought in more discard against the Delight Ferox deck. <laughs> that is a... That is a... Uh, <laughs> extra crispy recipe over there. Uh, about it, Vazes. Well, land on black. Go to combat. Counter on... I don't even know. Gilded Goose. Hit ya. Kiora. And go. About it. A dabs. <laughs> Alright, Funna finds a land that turns on their bedevil. Now we could use a Ferox to get this card. Ooh, Edgar. Okay. Okay, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Funna passes. Now, well, Paradise Druid. <sighs> Counter on Paradise Druid. Untap. We're trying to get to something big. I don't know if we can do it. Yeah, maybe, maybe they did. It doesn't actually work. It doesn't even go to the graveyard. It's just like, if it causes you to discard it, put it on the battlefield instead. So it's actually got its own... It's own replacement effect. Wow, just going face? All right. Uh, sure. We will take it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Night of the Eben Legion. Uh, right now we are playing this Null Hide Fight Rigging. Null Hide Ferox Fight Rigging deck. I think, did I update the... Nope. I thought I updated it, but maybe I didn't. Uh, it should be updated now. All right, opponent, what do you got? What are we bedeviling, friend? Oh, okay, that, that actually works. No, no hide at the moment. So the second go blank is pretty good. I'll make a food. Opponent grows their dork. I 
Well, this isn't looking good now. <laughs> All of our opponent's discards actually paying off at the moment. Yeah, Fire X is a really cool card. It's got a downside, but it can also be really powerful when uh, when things go right. About it, combat. It's in. <sighs> this is a bad a bad position to be in. The discard did work out for our opponent. Their hand is horrible, but the discard did actually work out. So, oh, no, 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 opponent. Well, I guess, does this actually work the way they want? I guess it kind of does. Okay, if that was a goal, then that actually, that works for now. One, two, well, okay. That's interesting. Whether or not it's enough remains to be seen. Tybalt. The question is, what do we do with this Tybalt? What can we do with it? I mean, I guess we gotta get the Edgar. And, away you go. and then put a counter on the Goose. Oh, okay, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see about it. So they gotta kill the Tibalt in one way. They can't let us untap with that. Fatal push, you know, not a bad draw. Kills the Tibalt. But we do get to draw off of... Hmm. We do get to draw off the Kiora, which is something. I don't play Edgar. Draw a card. More lands. Play in the land. Counter on Edgar. Untap, pass the dirt. I don't know if we're getting there or not. Munas, welcome to the Vidge Ball. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hmm. All right, so opponent gonna legend rule themselves again. This time they really do lose one. There we go. All right, we actually kill the Edgar. It happened. Yeah, it would go. It would go under our opponent's control, unfortunately. <laughs> Opponent attacks and attacks. I don't kill a token. Make a food. We need to draw something big. We have many big things in our deck, but we need to draw one, and we need to draw it sooner. We're gonna be. Ooh. Okay, that's that's relatively big. Big enough. We will not complain. Masker worm. Okay. 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 Out of here. Yes. And then go to combat, counter on Massacre Worm. Regisar, draw a card. Now we're now we're in business. Now we're in business. Hit ya, down to 14. And now it's untapped to be safe. Pass the turn. Opponent gets back Edgar, but that's fine. I think we're gonna steal. I think we're gonna steal. Troll Saft, welcome to the Fish Ball. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big Zip Jeffrey, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> there was a big thing we needed about it. Gonna go attacking. They can only pump once? Yeah. Hmm. All right, let's just block with the Goose. Blood Tithe Harvester, sure. Oh, discard the land. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Our best friend. <laughs> Actually, though, I think we... I think we turn Timber Symbiosis here, though. Symbiosis. Massacre worm number two. <laughs> yes. It only gets rid of the token. Phone is going to discard the 
Oh, I hope they draw discard. Oh, it'd be so funny. Drain him, drain him, draw a card. Counter on a massacre worm, pass the turn, opponent untaps. Double massacre worm's kinda sweet. <laughs> the noxious gear hulk's also kinda sweet. We're, we finally found our payoffs. It took a minute, but we found them. About it. I think we got there. This deck's kind of funny. I like this deck. <laughs> I like this deck. We'll block with the Registar. They got to pump or lose it. Yeah, that's fine. Come on. Thought he's his Ferox opponent. <laughs> All right, another Blood Tithe. Well, play a Gear Hulk. Get rid of the Knight. Hitch ya. Opponent's got a block. Blocks it. Wait, this this kills them. This. <laughs> I mean, I guess they're gonna die to massacre worm triggers anyway. But <laughs> are there any particular mechanics you would like to see return to standard? Oh, <sighs> there's there's a lot of sweet old mechanics that I do like. What would be the one I'd want to return to standard most? Why are Planeswalker so wide on the stack? Just just arena things. No one knows. <laughs> I've never I've never been able to figure that out. Banding banding for troll purposes. What about buyback? Buyback's probably just too busted. Buyback's buyback is powerful though, and it can do cool things. Not not storm. Andy, honestly, I think I I've tried to argue this before that maybe there's some upside to Andy. Because it's going to discourage people from building, like, super expensive decks. Because if you build a super expensive deck and then you play against, like, a budget deck and you have to ante your, whatever, original dual land, it's, like, super painful. I don't know if that's actually a good enough reason, but... I mean, technically every mechanic's kicker, right? <laughs> if you really think about it, if you really think about it... They're all just, they're all just kicker. <laughs> Spell Shapers, I don't know if that's a mechanic, but yeah, that would be really cool to see more of those. Do you think, this was another good pod quest, uh, podcast question, what about Slivers? Do you think Slivers will be coming back? We're going back to Dominaria, that's a that's a Slivery plane, potentially. Do you think we'll get more Slivers? Or do you think we're we're past the, the Sliver point of, of magic? Like, do you think there's enough, enough Sliver designs in existence... Mark Rosewater hates Kicker, but every mechanic is, not every mechanic, but many mechanics are kind of just like Kicker, but with different wording. So I can't hate it that much. All right, let's, let's do some honk honking here. Goose, goose. Pass the turn. <laughs> I mean, it basically, basically is. Well, no, like, more Slivers. The return of Slivers. Yeah, we did get some in Modern Horizons 1, you're right. They did make it in Standard, but they do exist. Opponent gets in. <sighs> Water down. Either Water down or Busted. Evoke is a really sweet mechanic. It's got some, like, Muldrifter, Shriekmar, iconic cards. So, I like... All right. I like the mechanic. Hmm. Yeah, I think we gotta do it this way. Valky you. Planet or Elves. <laughs> Having a hard time even getting this fight rigging down or this Nullhide Ferox. The Nullhide Ferox would be great though. That would shut down. That would shut down this offense. The opponent goes to combat. Goes attacking. Yeah, I think we gotta take it. We need our mana. Opponent hits us. Down to nine. And. Yeah, Evoke could be. Evoke also, though, can be very powerful. So I think they'd have to be careful with it. But I think it would be sweet. More cycling's always good. Cycling. <sighs> should just always be in standard. Cycling, 
I mean, scrying, I guess, is evergreen now, but just the more we have, the better. Landfall is just kicker. Play a land in at some point in the future. I mean, I can, I can see that argument. I think it kind of is. I mean, really, a lot of... <sighs> All right, let's fight rigging. A lot of mechanics are, like, kicker-ish. Well, let's... All right, another fight rigging. Play the tap land. Another fight rigging is not great, but no attacks past the turn. Oh, it's definitely not great with Null Hide Ferox coming down. That might have been... Well, what else do we have to take? Oh, not Companion. No, 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 no. Companion and Eminence are the mechanics that I want to see return the least in the history of Magic. Those are those are just two of the worst mechanics. Well, block the Trespasser. Stay at eight. There's the Bone Crusher. Well, play a land. Play no hide, Ferox. Counter on Lanor. We can't cast our <laughs> our fight rigging anyway, so. Alright, opponent, your go. <sighs> energy! Uh, I don't know if I want to see energy return. Affinity for artifacts, probably not to standard. I think you can print a little bit of affinity stuff like they did in Modern Horizons, and it's fine. But as far as being like, we want there to be an affinity deck in standard, it's just, I don't know if there's any way to really balance it. Affinity for non-artifacts is interesting. I think that could be sweet. If we saw, like, oh, there was affinity for land types before and stuff like that, I think that would be way more interesting than just doing affinity for artifacts again. Which I think is a lot less interesting. Well, all right. So this loses abilities. We put a counter on the Ferox. We cast another fight rigging. Oh my god. All right, get another fight rigging. Pass the turn. I kind of feel like we're dying though. This is not actually good. All we have is fight riggings and nothing to do with them. How about it, cast a log when drawing cards. There's no hide's gonna have to hold. I'm sure we'll get quad land someday. If enough time goes by, sooner or later. Sooner or later. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if I'm sure of that. Maybe, I, I don't know. On a long enough timeline, yes. But I don't actually think we'll get quad lands in the near future. There would have to be a pretty specific, maybe in commander or something. Wow, they're just going for it. All right, well, um. Sack of food, gain some life. Kill a bone crusher. Drop to six. <laughs> Another fair hux. Um Okay. So this is a 4-4 four four now. <laughs> I'll play the Ferox. <laughs> uh, grow it. Grow it. We're never, we're never casting this fight rigging. Not, not ever happening. Hit ya. <laughs> We got trust these Ferroxes are just going to go all the way. Opponent goes down to 12. All right, opponent. All right. They're coming for you. What about fetch lands? Ooh, level up. Level up was so bad last time. I would almost rather see... I would almost rather see, like, a twist on level up. Like, a some sort of upgraded level up. Oh, sweep is pretty, pretty janky. Blood tie the harvest, uh. Uh-huh. You're just getting in there? Doesn't this just die? Okay. Oh, I see. Opponent's opponent's just giving up. All right, that's that's fine. Lutes and scoops it up. Ha! <sighs> they brought back channel. Did you did you actually make that connection? I don't know if you saw the short today. Um, but I hadn't made the connection until recently. Oh, uh, ingest is. 
Oh, Devoid. Not Devoid. Devoid would be on my least favorite. It, it does nothing. Uh, like, so high of a percentage of time. I really, I really hate Devoid. And it's, like, intentionally confusing. Like, everything about Devoid, I think, is just a bad mechanic. Devoid, oh, my God. That was a bad era of magic design. Uh, Devoid is the worst. Like, the cards look colored, but then they just print their colorless on them. So it looks weird and non-intuitive and it just does nothing in almost all situations there's fringe situations where it's like oh protection from a color and it gets around it or something Ma <laughs> mega morph i actually <laughs> mega morph i don't know why they didn't just print morph again like is the is the mega part of it actually worth it is that tiny tiny upside of getting a plus one plus one counter is that actually enough to make a whole new mechanic and what did you expect people to say about the name like the name is just so cheesy like i don't know i don't know what wizards expected what what reaction was wizards expecting when they named it mega morph if they named it something else but it was similar to morph maybe it would have been okay but I, I don't know what they thought was going to happen. The problem with energy is just... Oh boy, we always whiff with this. I got to say, I'm not impressed with Valky in this deck. Like, hardly at all. I guess it was good against the Edgar last match, but in general, this Valky has just been bad. Processors are cool. I do like... I like a lot of the cards that have Devoid. Like, Eldrazi Displacer is a really sweet card. I just don't like the mechanic that that's on them. The mechanic itself, I think, is just uh, not not very appealing. All right. Well, the land draws will continue. Uh, I guess we're I guess we're getting rowdy. And past the turn, yeah, this is this is bad. So many lands. I like proliferate. I think proliferate's fine. I think that proliferate is a mechanic where we wouldn't want it in like War of the Spark. And, like, War of the Spark standard. If you're, like, super busted Planeswalker heavy, then I think it could be a problem. But if you're smart about it and do it in a standard that isn't all about Planeswalkers, then I think that proliferate's cool. Okay, but Devils, the Regis are. The problem is we're going to be staring down this... We're going to be staring down this Krog. What is our record with this deck? I think we're 2-0 with this deck. Unless I'm forgetting something. Brain fog. Ugh, goose. Not the best time for a goose. Yeah, this isn't... This is not looking good in this one. Opponent flips the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Oh, tribal instances and sorceries are something that I don't know if it'll ever come back. Mutate the problem is just that it's very complex and confusing like magic rules are weird what they wanted mutate to do is pretty intuitive you just jam two monsters together but when you get into all the edge cases of mutate mutate is a re oh boy we have just drawn literally all mana this game <laughs> mana dorks mana dorks mana lands uh yeah this this is not good the problem, yeah, that is the problem with uh, with Mutate. I, I do think Mutate would be fun to come back. I really enjoyed playing Mutate. Uh, but it is, like, a very complicated mechanic when you really dig into it. We either get one land, one keep, or we get all the lands. <laughs> Ext Extort's a fun mechanic. That would be a good one. And Mistort Extort's a mechanic that I feel like was maybe a little underpowered last time. Like, it seems like wizards, wizards priced, yeah, we're just, I mean, we're, well, I will draw. I think we're just dead, though, with this Croxa coming back. Um, I feel like they could have made better extort cards. Like, what's the best extort card? Blind, whatever, the enchantment that taps stuff down, maybe? <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. Um, but I feel like, oh, don't bring back, companion and for my money is the is the worst mechanic that has ever been ever been made not even not even kidding bring back banding that's fine bands with legends that that's fine phasing we already got that one back uh, sweep sweep bring that one back just don't bring back companions aj welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription big super for you thank you thank you thank you miracles have led to some great moments 
there it can also be a very frustrating mechanic because they're so high variance like they go from pretty bad to like absurd depending on if you miracle them which they lead to really exciting moments which i think is a positive like miracles and mechanic the bonfire moment maybe one of my all-time favorite magic moments but the bonfire at uh the magic world cup that is about as good of a moment as magic can possibly have honestly and that is brought to us by brought to us by the power of miracles like without miracles that play wouldn't really exist in the same way um on the other hand there's times when it's just really unfun where you know the feeling of ugin in standard where you like kind of outplay your opponent the whole game and then and then they do this one thing that dominates the whole game and essentially invalidates everything else you did i think that that's something that happens with miracles too where it's like we i did all this stuff i played this good game and then they just threw the bonfire or then they just threw the treat with angels but i think it would also be better with digital being more of a focus because they're also kind of awkward in paper in paper you got to make someone you got to make someone look at every single draw if they have a miracle in the deck wow are we just going to cast a well after complaining about this velky a million times it seems like there's a decent chance that velky might win us this game well not velky per se but uh tybalt take it up Land a graveyard trespasser. Opponent does some looting. Hey Seth, I was a terrible pilot on the Mardu Vampires list. It's something I've been working on for a long time. Wasn't really expecting the six drop into six drop into six drop earlier to be. Ha, uh, Avarice. Uh, we we got lucky. We had nothing. We well, we were kind of praying. We do have a lot of big things in our deck, but we were basically praying for something big because we had just nothing going on. Uh, the deck looks sweet though. The uh, all right, so there goes our Tybalt. Unfortunately. I like the idea of the deck, though. The deck did look sweet. No play Giora. Play a land. Rotting Registar. Draw a card. Uh, Actually, let's hit our opponent with a Paradise Druid. Untap Paradise Druid pass the turd devil welcome to the fishbowl for the fifth month thank you for your subscription big super for you cascade i think is <sighs> if they ever brought back cascade it's got to be hey good to see you billy how are you if they ever bring back cascade it's got to be on expensive cards it's got to be on like five plus mana cards that's when cascade is fun I think Cascade on expensive cards is actually, like, a really cool mechanic. Cascade on three mana spells, not a fun mechanic. Well, that's just, it's too abusable. We see so many modern decks that are built around, that are built around uh, abusing three mana Cascade spells that I don't want to see more of those. Revolt's interesting, although it's also high risk in older formats, too, a little bit, just because... All right. Just because uh, you can trigger Revolt so easily with fetch lands, but I do think it's a good mechanic for like standard in in newer formats. Graveyard Trespasser. Okay. Now this is gonna get interesting. Riding Registrar. Draw a card. Land. Fight rigging. Now we'll take turn timbers and meiosis. Oh, this actually, this is awesome. This lets us kill the Chandra too. Symbiosis into, wow. Uh, Noxious Gear Hulk. Kill the reflection of Kiki Jiki, draw a card. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Uh, Kill your Chandra. Play a Gilded Goose. That was a really, 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 really good turn. Um, and... You know what? We're going to have to discard it anyway. So let's just untap Llanowar Elves. Go. The big board is here. Suspend. 
ah, is also kind of like complicated. Spectacle's a good one. I think Spectacle could come back at some point. A discount for dealing damage to your opponent, I think, is is a is a fine aggro mechanic. Have I seen this card? I, ooh, another Chandra. I haven't. So this is a custom card. Honest Taxpayer. Six minus six, six. <laughs> Pants with Homerids. Ward, anti a card in your hand. Skip your draw step. Beginning your upkeep, draw a card. When three or more cards are in anti, transform Honest Taxpayer to it that embezzles. Power toughness is equal to the... <laughs> to the current value of all cards in anti in dollars. <laughs> Annihilator 6. Oh, uh, that is, that is, uh, <laughs> that is awesome. I hadn't seen <laughs> such a, such a good design. I mean, it's obviously not actually printable, but, oh, it's hilarious. Um, <laughs> well, Graveyard Trespasser. We too can play Graveyard Trespasser. And eat an Oxus Gear Hulk. Counter on the goose. Chandra, Chandra opponent. Uh, I'm just worried about a sweeper. A sweeper could be bad. We drop the dead. We play a Lanor. Fight ranking's a pretty good card, isn't it? Fatal push on the Regisar. Okay. Um, untap a goose. All right, we need like one more big thing. We need like one more big thing to actually fully close out this game. Opponent. <laughs> Auntie's never coming back, I don't think. <laughs> uh, Wizards, I think Wizards would like to forget that ever existed. It's just too gambly. Wizards already deals with issues of, like, gambling. Hey, what's up, up Affinity of Squirrel? Good to see you again. I'm glad you made it. Hopefully work is, uh, is going well. I think Wizards would like us to forget that it exists, because it's just too gambly. Yeah, that's that's kind of the issue. And, like, Magic, there's already, like, loot box and booster packs, and you get some, like, undercurrents of gambling. Honestly, everyone knows that booster packs, for a lot of people, are are actually just, are actually just gambling. Like, let's be honest about it. Oh, yes. Masker Worm? What do you say about that one, about it? <laughs> it's gonna be, I'm not gonna massacre anything, but... It's still a pretty good card. Massacre Worm, Triggers draws us a card. The opponent has a Heartless Act, trying to stay alive. We're really good at drawing Llanowar Elves. I'll go to combat. Counter on a Llanowar Elf. Attack with everything. Exile, Exile. Down to eight is this game. Did we close it out? Oh, I want to see, yeah, I want to see City, uh, City in a Bottle for Modern Horizons too. That would be sweet. Could have used it during Eldrain Standard too. Air me. Are we going to stream uh, Double Master 2022 on Thursday? So I am not going to cancel the stream to. I'm not going to cancel the stream Thursday to do a spoiler video. I don't think that it's... The spoiler season is going to be different with uh, Double Masters. The focus is going to be on financing stuff. We will... We can watch the stream. So I am planning on doing that. But the plan for Thursday is uh, is we can watch the Watsi stream, see the kickoff of the Double Masters stuff, and then we'll just... We'll play Magic. I'm not going to... I'm not going to stop and do a spoiler video. I'll just cover it Friday. I don't think it's... Being an all-reprint set, I don't think it's important enough to cancel the stream for. And I'm tired of missing so many streams, uh, being sick and everything, so... So, so yeah, we'll watch along the Watsy stream, see what they say about Double Masters, and then we'll just play Magic for the rest of the stream. Uh, spoiler season starts Thursday, yeah. Our spoiler actually goes up on Friday. So we had an exclusive spoiler this time, so that'll, that'll be going up on Friday. But oh. on that note, everyone, I think... 
I think that brings us to the end of our stream for tonight. I'm still fully getting over the COVID stuff. So gonna call it an end there for tonight, but we'll be back Thursday, full stream, not stopping it for spoilers or anything. So reminders on the way out the door. And also, thank you. I was afraid after two weeks of uh, not streaming, that I was gonna come and fire up the stream and no one would be here. And that didn't happen. You all were here and you're awesome and I missed you all. So thanks so much for uh, for hanging out, everyone. Reminders, replay YouTube. That's where you can find the old stream, normal YouTube. Tomorrow's Against Odds. Playing a modern combo deck I've wanted to play for quite a while. So check that out yeah i got covid at uh it i went to command fest richmond two weekends ago and then i got home and immediately got covid so i've been recovering from covid for the last week uh and now this is my first stream back for uh, two weeks and i missed some because of the event and then some because of covid so uh and a reminder that our sponsor tonight is card kingdom and if you need some magical cards you can get them over at cardkingdom.com even get a free goldfish sticker most importantly as i mentioned before thank you to all of you y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular and i love y'all thanks so much for hanging out today everyone thanks for having fun we'll be back on thursday to do it again so until then everyone have an amazing day a great afternoon i love y'all and i will talk to you soon